really built a consistent program at Virginia. Here is the kickoff down to Terrence Wilkins at his own two. And out to only the 14-yard line. And there, Virginia starts inside their own 20. That was Mark Carbone who came down to make the initial hit. And we come out with the Virginia Cavaliers and Tim Sherman, who is the quarterback. Only four TD passes, 11 interceptions. And this Virginia offense has scored only two TDs in their last 14 quarters. And there's his dad, Tom Sherman, who's the wide receivers coach. Virginia, first down 10 from the 14-yard line. Tiki Barber, Daryl Medley in the backfield. And they'll start, as you'll see, a long time all night. They'll go to Tiki Barber. Not successful hit behind the line of scrimmage. Kennard Lang, defensive end, made the play. Let's take a look at the Virginia Cavaliers and their offensive football team. They do not throw the ball very well, certainly not successfully for touchdowns. You'll be seeing a lot of Tiki Barber in the backfield. Tiki Barber with 3,800, 3,389 yards, the all-time leading rusher at Virginia. Thanks to a very good offensive line, Lately, the left guard, is really their leader there. On the rollout, left side, Sherman leveled. He wanted to throw the ball to Darrell Medley. It's incomplete. Third and long coming up for the Virginia Cavaliers. We told you this Miami team is 12th ranked in total defense. They surrender about 277 yards a game. Holmes and Lang, excellent defensive ends. Fortney, a good run stopper in the middle. The linebackers, they're all well balanced. All are good tacklers, all are solid, led by James Burgess in the middle. And in the secondary, the man you'll be seeing a lot of tonight at strong safety number three, Tremaine Mack. This will be third down 10, Virginia. At the Cavalier 14-yard line, they go to a three-wide outset, all three to the left side. Brian Owen in motion. Sherman flushed from the pocket. Virginia gets a grand total of about a yard and a half in their first three plays. The linebackers, Coley and Russell, combine on the stop. This is virtually a home game for Miami, only 30 miles north of their campus. And already we have a punting situation for Will Bryce. He was an All-American last year, All-ACC this year, averages nearly 45 yards per punt. And here's Dwayne Starks, fastest man on the Miami football team. Starks is going to fair catch it. Back at his own 33-yard line. 49-yard punt. And now here's the man we were talking about. I said he's the quarterback with a linebacker attitude, Ryan Clement. He's played with a separated shoulder, a sore ankle, ninth in the nation in passing efficiency. He's a junior from Denver, Colorado, 18 TDs, only six interceptions. That's what the University of Miami wants to come back to. The championship. They will begin from their own 33-yard line. Three and out for the Cavaliers. On the first down, the ball is loose and picked up by Clement back at his own 24-yard line. Great pressure right up the middle from Wally Rayner. That's ball Virginia, was and, loose, yeah. and that's Virginia in that pressure defense. You got to watch Ferrier. Ferrier gets the pressure. He runs through on first down. And look at this. Jams the fullback, straightens him up, goes back and recovers the fumble. Look at him get to the fumble. That's great pressure by Virginia. They will zone blitz you. They will blitz six, seven. They will sometimes send eight rushes. But Ferrier and Sharper are the team aimers. A loss of eight. This will be second down, 18. Clement behind the center. It is complete to the left side to Gerald Daphne, who is the backup tight end. And let's take a look at this Miami offensive football team. They've been hot lately, as I told you, 81 points in their last two regular season games. Tony Gator, former running back, Yatiel Green, a pro prospect. Chris Jones is the starting tight end. Daryl McMillan starts at the, the three, three backs really play at tailback, but Daryl uh, will start there. You'll also see Trent Jones and Edger and James, and there's that offensive line. Casey Jones, the senior center. Some say he's the best in America at the center position. This is third down 12. Flags are down. Free play. Deep ball. Touchdown. Yatiel Green, touchdown. 
69 yards, and I believe it was an offside call against Virginia. James Ferrier may have jumped offside. That's going to be a Miami touchdown. Our SEC officiating crew. Penalty against Virginia. Bill Goss is our referee. Officially 70 yards on the touchdown pass. Clement to Yatiel Green. About Southwest Missouri State, they've been here year by year. The personal foul against the defense. We have a touchdown, a 15-yard penalty assessed on the kickoff. You're really starting in a hole. They'll be down 7 0 if Andy Crossland the a personal foul assessment on the kickoff. 7 0 Miami. It was three and out for the Cavaliers and the Hurricanes. And Mark, I know you've seen it a million times, and there's a little bit of an encounter on the field again. You've seen it a lot on a free play. Defense relaxes sometimes. Well, you have to concentrate, particularly in this situation, because the offense is taught to go right at the defense. If they jump off sides, if there's movement over there, you stick with your play. And that's just what Miami did. Joe Williams trying to cover Yatiel Green, and Green gets his fourth touchdown of the year. Maybe Ditch will try. This is George Gaetan, who's their specialty kicker for Miami. As you can see, they're lined up for onside. I think that's why Virginia called the timeout. There it is. Got to travel 10 yards. Didn't go 10. Ball is loose down at about the 26-yard line. But remember, it's got to travel 10 yards. Virginia touched it. Yes, that's true. Came up and stopped it, and he came loose, and it's Miami ball. Virginia did not allow it to travel 10 yards, but since they touched it, Miami's Earl Little fell on it, and Rondé Barber was the man who fumbled it and down 7 to nothing. Miami has Virginia with their backs against the wall early. The problem for Virginia is the wrong barber caught this ball. It should have been Tiki Barber. You're going to see Rondé. The ball hits him in the chest. He's got to scoop it in and fall on it, not try to make a big play. But the hustle of the Miami Hurricanes getting down to the bottom of the pile, digging that ball out, and able them to recover the ball. First down 10 from the 25-yard line. Ryan Clement wants to throw plenty of time. Screen over on the left side. Well read, but the tackle is broken by Dyro McMillan. He still loses 10 yards back to the 36-yard line. Wow, what a wild and woolly start to this football game. We don't mind that at all. After all, we're here for a little entertainment, right? Here's the Virginia Cavaliers' defensive line. They are solid. Their sack leader is Dwayne Ashman. Number 94, their senior. The linebackers are the key to this team, particularly Ferrier and Sharper, both seniors, both ranked in the top 10 by the NFL scouts coming out. Rondé Barber, Tiki's brother and twin, is at one corner, Joe Williams at the other. Their big cover corner, Joe Rowe, not playing tonight because he's hurt. Here's a handoff to Daryl McMillan inside the 35 to about the 33-yard line where Todd White makes the stop for Virginia. Todd is their senior right defensive tackle, number 91. One of the first worries for the Virginia Cavaliers was to stop the running game of Miami. Thus far, they've done that, but now they have to concentrate on the pass. On second and long and third and long, Virginia likes to go to their zone blitz, which means they blitz five or six people, get those linebackers involved with, they run stunts, and sometimes you'll even see a defensive tackle drop off into zone coverage. McMillan and Williams in the backfield for Clement. This is third and 16 from the Virginia 31. Movement on the line, no flag. Deep drop, Clement. That's Rondé Barber making up for his miscue. There's a penalty marker down out of about the 36-yard line. The pass was intended for sophomore Magic Benton, number eight. But it was picked off by Rondé Barber, his fourth interception of the year, 16th career. This could be a big turnaround, but a penalty marker is down. Again, an SEC officiating crew. This is Bill Goss, the head man, the referee. Neither team seems to know. On the return of the interception, personal foul in Miami. Only 15 yards, assessed from the end of the kick. Wow, well, that certainly changes things in a hurry. Virginia was looking at being down 14 or worse to nothing here, but it's turned around that quickly. 
And Rondé Barber redeemed himself after fumbling the kickoff. Watch this play. Rondé Barber keeps his eye on the ball. This is a defense that's intercepted 20. They do tip drills. That's a perfect illustration of the tip drill. Taking that ball, tipping it in the air, catching it, and then going down the field and getting yardage out of it. This team had 20 interceptions in the regular season for the fourth consecutive year. Three wideouts in for the Cavaliers. First and 10 from their 47-yard line. Barber likes to run it inside, even though he's a little guy at 5'10", 195. He gets it out to about the 48-yard line. Chad Pegues, who's playing in place of the usual starter Marvin Davis at the left tackle spot, makes the play for Miami. And Tiki may be small in stature, but he's got a big heart. He follows that blocking offensive line, and he loves the iso play. He loves to follow his fullback, and he takes the ball north and south. He's not a guy that will run to the sidelines. He'll make the move and bounce off the defender and take it towards the goal line. So Miami took them only 55 seconds to score and take the lead 7 to nothing. 10.36 to go in the first period. But the Cavs have it second and seven at midfield. Sherman to throw, slips and down at the 43. They may credit Kenny Holmes with a sack there. He has 10 on the season, a loss of seven yards. Sherman slips. Speaking of that, let's talk, as we look at this, talk a little bit about the condition of this PAT field. Well, this field is a little wet. We had some rain last night, and the middle of the field has been resurfaced. They added some new grass to the middle of the field. That's why it's a little soft out there. But as you see, Kenny Holmes in this situation, he just blows by the outside of the offensive line and gets to the quarterback. Miami has blitzed twice thus far. This is a team that likes to get there with their front four, and in the first eight plays, they blitz twice. On third and 13, Barber, a uh, slight delay, gets across the 45, and Kenny Holmes steps up to make the tackle. Most people believe Kenny Holmes is a senior will go about the second round of the NFL draft. Uh, Miami, of course, leads the world in producing <laughs> NFL players. They definitely do. Most high school kids in Florida and across the country, and they want to go to the NFL. Their first choice is usually the University of Miami. So it's three and out. Here comes Will Bryce to punt again. First punt was 51 yards. Dwayne Starks runs a 4 2 5 40. Back in his 10, he's just going to get away from it. There's the poison call, as they call it, the wave off. Going to get a Virginia bounce down around the 10-yard line. So Miami will have to start there at their 10. We have 9.15 to go in the first quarter. A punt of 43 yards. The Hurricane. A little ditty you put together there. It took me a little time, but my 7-year-old neighbor helped me out. It was nicely done. First and 10 from the 10. Miami leading 7 and up. And look at the penetration by the Virginia defensive line. Jamie Sharper is the man stopping Dyro McMillan. And by the way, Mark, we're told now that the Miami coaches' headsets don't work. And of course, by rule, that means both sides have to disconnect the headsets. The players are going to have to play this game themselves for a while. That's the way it should be. These players started this football game with a little bit of a rumble and will probably finish that way. But they should be out there playing this game, and they are. It's a tough physical football game. This will be second down 10 for the Hurricanes from their nine. Clement, plenty of time to throw. Across the middle, has a receiver wide open, and he's got it at the 43-yard line. That's Tony Gator, who's the fastest of their wide receivers, a former tailback at 5'8", switched to that position and gets the grab for a gain of 33. Now, first down, they've got to put pressure on the quarterback. They didn't in this situation. Gator runs loose in the middle of the field. Where's the middle strong safety? There's nobody in the middle of the field. There's not a safety. I talked to the quarterback, Ryan Clement, about this. He said, if that safety's not there, I'm going to take advantage of it. Take a look at Tony Gator, 5'8", 170 pounds, seven TD catches. He's a possession receiver, also a touchdown receiver, if you want to call him that, on the first down 10. Inside handoff. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage at the 44. Dyro McMillan not having much success so far. Maurice Anderson comes in to make the play. And already Virginia is going to have to be without their senior defensive left end, John Harris, at 6'8 and 270 pounds. He's been ejected on Miami's extra point. And that's going to hurt Virginia on the defensive side. He was a tough player in there. He provided, one, a lot of penetration. Two, he provided a lot of pass rush. They're going to miss him out there tonight. They're going to have to go with that zone blitz again. Watch the linebackers come more often on second down. Miami goes to the I formation on second down eight from the 45-yard line. Some interior pressure, but still time for Clement to get rid of the ball. It's inside Cavalier territory, close to a first down. At the 48-yard line, going to Yatil Green at 6'2", He's pro-size in that size range of a uh, Jerry Rice, as an example. 
He definitely isn't. He's very physical. They're most physical at wide receiver. But when you go to a zone blitz on the Virginia defense, what Miami does, they've got team speed and tremendous team speed. So Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, has to come up with another device to put pressure on Miami, but also cover those quick and fast wide receivers on the outside. They're going to bring the sticks in from the far side to measure. It's very close to a first down. Miami leading in this ballgame by a score of 7 to nothing on a 70-yard touchdown pass from Ryan Clement to Yatiel Green on the Hurricanes' first possession. And maybe it's something about Florida. You know, Virginia has played seven games in the state of Florida and never won here. Not very promising. If I'm Virginia and I have to play in Florida, maybe I should mail it in. How about Clement? Off to a good start. Five for six, 105 yards with the TD and the Rondi Barber interception. One other note here while we're talking about the Hurricanes, you see the measurement down there. It's going to be short about six inches or so. This will be the first time that the Virginia Cavaliers have ever played a natural disaster nickname team. A natural disaster? The Hurricanes. <laughs> <laughs> There's only three that I can think of. The Golden Hurricanes, Tulsa, yes. Miami, and uh, Iowa State Cyclones. You know any tornadoes or... Rainstorms or anybody? Not offhand, but I'll think about it and get back to you. All right. Double tight end. Less than a yard. Clement. He looked like a linebacker. He definitely did. He loves the contact. He does. And when you look at Ryan Clement, when we talked to him yesterday, he came down, he had a bruise under his eye, a bruise on his chin. It looked like he just went five rounds with Evander Holyfield. He is a tough physical linebacker, and he takes charge of this football team. Make no doubt about it. He is the offensive leader for the Miami Hurricanes. Yeah, he has some of that black mark over his, uh, his little mouse under his, uh, what would be his left eye. He was darn proud of that. That's a first down at the 45 of the Cavaliers. We have 7.06 to go in the first period, along with Craig Sager and Mark May, Bob Neal with you from the 7th Annual Cark West Bowl. I think Gerald Daffy goes in motion. A little yard or two this time. Daryl McMillan carrying again. McMillan, by the way, had a sprained ankle previously, and there are three tailbacks you'll be seeing tonight. Daryl McMillan, who is their leading ground gainer with 560 yards on the year, but you'll also see a very solid uh, little running back by the name of Trent Jones a little later in the game, and, and a star in the making, or at least they hope so, a freshman by the name of Edger and James. They're really proud of Edger and James, and they're very excited about him. He's big and strong and flashy, and he moves the pile, and this guy reminds me a lot of Tony Dorsett. When he's running, it doesn't look like he's moving. Second down nine from the 44. Clement on the drop. Plenty of time. Going to the end zone again. There's Yatiel Green. Oh. Off the fingertips. Mercy. Joe Williams again. Isolated out there. These Virginia defenders talked all week about, we miss Joe Rowe. We miss Joe Rowe. They had tried Sam McKeever in the Virginia Tech game. Now they've got Joe Williams, who's normally a safety, and they're having trouble one-on-one, -on -one, Mark. And I think it's worked to their disadvantage by talking about Joe Rowe because Miami understands this. They know it's hurt them. They're going right at Joe Williams. Joe Williams hasn't played that much this year. They're taking their opportunities. They're going deep with everything against them also. They know wherever he is on the field, they want to take their shots with him. But what's more important, they're doing a tremendous job of protecting the quarterback. Really just a loud misfire, though. Third down nine. Clements under pressure. Down the walls, loose in midfield. And Virginia has it. Dwayne Ashman fell on the ball, but the quarterback pressure came from Jamie Sharper. And Sharper came from the blind side, untouched. Ryan Clement did not see him, and he laid a lick on him. Here you're going to see it. You're going to watch Jamie Sharper on the far side. He's not even touched. Watch Clement. Here he is right here. He's going to come untouched. Hit him in the blind side. The quarterback doesn't see him. That's not fair. Clement has to have an opportunity where they protect him from the blind side or he's got to step up in the pocket and get rid of that ball because Virginia will blitz you, blitz you, and blitz you again. Two Miami turnovers already, an interception, and a fumble. Virginia lost it once on the fumble on the onside kick. Here comes Tiki Barber left side here at the line of scrimmage. But you see he got about a yard over here on the left. James Burgess. The 225-pound all-Big East middle linebacker made the stop for Miami. So Virginia hanging in here. This could easily have been an early blowout, and Tiki Barber is down. This is the line at midfield. Play fake to Thomas. Rolling right, Sherman. What a hit! It's complete to Jermaine Crowell, but Tremaine Mack 
We warned you about this young man and his ferocious hitting. <laughs> That's the T-Mac. He's telling you, don't come in my area because you're going to pay the price. Watch it right here. You're going to see the wide receiver, Jermaine Crowell, just come across the middle on a slant. And this is why it's his territory, the T-Mac man. You don't come across the middle against me right here. Pataya. These are the type of hits when you wake up, you think of mom's home cooking because you never want to get hit like that. They say he's a blend of Darren Woodson and Bubba McDowell, two great pro safeties. That, by the way, was a 13-yard gain anyway, Virginia's first first down. And here is Thomas, the true freshman. Thomas Jones from Big Stone Gap, Virginia. And a penalty marker is down at the line of scrimmage. Denny Fortney credit for the tackle. Procedure call against the Cavaliers. And I think this is going to be a true test for the offensive line for Virginia now on Tiki Alley. They're going to have to pick up the pieces, and they're going to have to hold the blocks just a little bit longer. George Wells, five times ACC Top coach pass. of the year. Only had six men on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty, repeat, first down. You heard the call, only six men on the line of scrimmage. George is 63 years old, and I know he's concerned about this young man, only 21 years old, Tiki Barber, with the hard hit in the hip, ACC player of the year. First and 15 at the Miami 42-yard line. That's Jones in motion out of the backfield. Sherman. Complete a bobbled catch, but there's going to be a gain on the play of uh, about seven yards. Crowell made the catch. Tuan Russell was covering. There's Crowell. He's... 6-4. He's in the height range of Herman Moore, if not the talent range. But he needs some speed, and he needs to catch a lot more balls than he's caught at the University of Virginia. He's their go-to guy. But this offense, when you saw the quarterback, Tim Sherman, roll out of the pocket, that's what they're going to have to do to be successful because the two defensive ends, Kenny Holmes and Kennard Lang, are putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback tonight. Second down eight from the 35-yard line. Deepest penetration of the night for the Cavaliers. Tim Sherman with the play fake. He can run it. He has over 200 yards rushing on the year. And Tim Sherman, who is not a gifted runner, he's not out of the Steve Young category, but he can get it done when he needs it, gets 10 and gets the first down. And let's go down to Craig Sager and check on Tiki Barber. Well, Bob, Tiki Barber's on the sidelines right now and in a lot of pain. He says he was speared in the back. Right now, the doctors and trainers are looking at him. They don't know if he has a bruised pelvic bone or possibly some rib damage, but there is no word yet, of course, on whether he'll be back in, but he's in a lot of pain on the sidelines right now. Bob. Yeah, he's worth the price of admission. Let's hope the young man is okay for his sake, but also for ours. He's an exciting running back. First and 10 from the 25 of Miami. Inside handoff to Daryl Medley. Medley only had nine carries all year to tell you how they go to team. That's what happens when you run a two-back offense. The fullback never gets the ball. He's just another offensive lineman out there and a running back's number. There you go. That's his regular season average. Nine carries, 24 yards, two catches. Second and seven at the Miami 22-yard line now. Cavaliers could be down in this game had things kept going Miami's way. 14 or 21 to nothing, but it's 7-0 in the first period. Thanks to two Miami turnovers. Here's the handoff to the young tailback. Boom! He took a hit. And the ball came loose. To Mack. This is Tremaine Mack. There's no sign that it's been blown dead. Mack has it all the way back for a touchdown. The freshman Thomas Jones coughed it up. And Mr. Playmaker, Tremaine Mack, was knocked out by Earl Little, number four, the cornerback, in a 79-yard return by Tremaine Mack. Talk about Johnny on the spot. They try to run the counter tray, which is a play that's beloved to me from the Washington Redskins. But what happens is the running back does not hold the ball. You've got to hold the ball in this type of game, in any type of game. But Tremaine Mack, Johnny on the spot. We talked about him being a big play player, and here he comes up with another big play. Just as I was saying, Virginia had been able to avoid getting too far behind here thanks to Miami turnovers. Virginia coughs it up for the second time. 
Here is the point after by Andy Crossland, and it is 14 to nothing. Miami on a pass play of 70 yards and a fumble recovery of 79 yards. Here it is again, Mark. Watch the hit on the back right here. The ball gets jopped loose. It's loose on the ground. It's batted around. But Tremaine Mack, the big play man, he's the playmaker for the special teams of Miami and the defense of Miami, picks the ball up, takes it down, runs it in for the touchdown. Miami up 14-0 who had only 36 carries all year. He did score three TDs, so he's had a little bit of experience behind Tiki Barber, but his head was down on the fumble. And the coaches said, what you have to do is get back in there. We need you. And you should see he's in on the kickoff return. However, it's coming down to Wilkins. Penalty marker is down. Out from the eight-yard line, Wilkins carves his way out to about the 26-yard line. But a penalty marker is down. We spent a lot of time with our referee tonight. Offsides a call on Miami. Bill Goss. Here's Butch Davis, second year head coach of Miami. Offsides on the kicking team. Penalties decline. First down. And we have a new quarterback for the Cavaliers, and he's had a lot of playing time this year. Aaron Brooks is his name. 6'3", 195. He's a sophomore from Newport News, Virginia. But both these quarterbacks have combined for only 47% completions and only five TDs all year long. A little more gifted athletically is Aaron Brooks. He can get outside the contain a little bit better sometimes than Tim Sherman. There's Thomas Jones in the backfield. Aaron Brooks to throw. Hard bounce, incomplete. Let's go back down to Craig Sager. Tiki Barber is now up on his feet. He is still in severe pain, but good news, Dr. Frank McHugh says there is no serious damage, just a bruised pelvic bone, and he has cleared Barber to go back into the game whenever he feels he's ready. Well, a bruised pelvic bone is usually a hit pointer, and I've had those in my NFL career. They're not a lot of fun. They're very, very painful, but you can play with them. But Tiki may be being told he's ready to play, but you can see the suffering on his face right now. Tape an aspirin to it, is what the old coaches would say. <laughs> Second down and ten. Up the middle, here comes Thomas Jones! To the 40-yard line of Miami, Marcus Wimberly finally chased Thomas Jones out of bounds, trying to make up for the fumble. 34 yards on the play. Look at his speed. And that's the best tonic for a fumble, is come up with a big play, and this is what Thomas Jones does. They, they run a little draw. It's a lead draw. He gets excellent blocking by his offensive line. Here he's going to hit to the sidelines. Take it down the sidelines. Here's the other angle. He goes to the sidelines and uses his speed to get to the outside. Excellent run by the freshman. First down 10 at the 40-yard line. Miami leading in the game, 14 to nothing. 3.31 to go, first period. Brooks rolling and throwing. It's complete for the first down at the 29-yard line of the Hurricanes. That's Jermaine Crowell making the 11-yard grab over the middle for the first down. A little slow to get up there. Is that Kenny Holmes? Yes, Kenny Holmes is injured. What Virginia has to do is exactly what they did on that last play, move the pocket, have your quarterbacks run outside with the football and break contain. That's why they put Eric Brooks in there. Aaron Brooks can move that pocket. He will be rolling and running with the football and throwing with it on the run. Looking at the lower right leg of Kenny Holmes, 29 career sacks, already had one here tonight and a couple of tackles. He's a senior from Gifford, Florida. We talked with him likewise. Very personable young man. Usually when the trainers come out and grab you by the back of the calf and move your knee around, the first thing they're checking is your knee to see if it's stable. And he's a big, tough guy. We talked to him yesterday. He's a fun-loving type of player. He's looking forward to his next career at the next level, and I believe he'll be back. As you see, he's third all-time at Miami. Daniel Stubbs, of course, leads the Miami sack parade. Let's hope that Kenny Holmes is all right. Already, Virginia has lost their left defensive end, John Harris, who ejected from the ball game, and Tiki Barber has been hurt when he was took a hip pointer on a tackle. While we have a moment, I want to remind you, our NBA action continues on TNT next Friday. A rematch of last year's Eastern Conference Final. To nothing. 3.17 to go, first period. Brooks is going deep into the end zone. What a catch. It's a touchdown. What a catch. What a grab by Jermaine Crowell. 29 yards. Remember, he is six foot four. And that 
play to his advantage, his height. He concentrated on the ball. Great play action delivery by Aaron Brooks. Sits in the pocket, lost the ball out there, where only Jermaine Crowell could get it. He used his long arms and his reach to his advantage and hauls in a spectacular catch for the touchdown. He's having a good early game, is Crowell, making those tough catches over the middle. Four grabs, 60 yards, one touchdown. We have 308 to go in the first period. Rafael Garcia for the point after, and we have a 14-7 game. That's the first touchdown, the third touchdown, excuse me, for Virginia in the last 15 quarters. They've been on a touchdown drop. Well, here's the replay of this play. Watch the play action fake. He fakes it to the freshman, Thomas Jones, sets back in the pocket, just lost the ball in the corner of the end zone where only his wide receiver. Look at the little push-off right there by Jermaine Crowell. He gets his hands on the ball, concentrates, hauls it in for the touchdown. Here you're going to see another angle. The play fake. Now watch the little push-off he's going to give. Right there, he pushes back off in the back, goes up for the ball. Excellent concentration by the wide receiver. That's a big time, big time play. And Dwayne Starks is a big time uh, cornerback covering there with three interceptions on the year. But he's only 5'10". But that's where height plays out. The six foot four Jermaine Crowell, he used his height. And Aaron Brooks comes in, first series, look at him. He's a happy camper. He thinks he's got the starting quarterback position for the rest of the game, and he should. He's earned it. Aaron Brooks, a relief pitcher who comes in and strikes <laughs> out the side. Huh? He's only a sophomore at 6'3", 195. That's only the second touchdown pass that he's thrown in his, in his young career. He just had one in the regular season. On that drive, 74 yards, four plays, only 30 nine seconds and it was Brooks to Crowell for the 29 yard touchdown and we have ourselves a game again it looked like the Hurricanes who have been red hot offensively Cole Big East champions they scored 81 points in their last two games but Virginia pulls to within 14 to 7. And said never give up attitude George Welsh he learned it at the Naval Academy he doesn't want his players to give up and this is exactly what Virginia's doing they're not giving up they're staying in this football game. You're looking at danger on the hook there Tremaine Mack but they kick it away from him this is Marcus Wimberly. Penalty markers are down back inside the 20. So is Wimberly out at the 30-yard line. One of the goals for the Virginia special teams kicking and punting is to keep the ball away from Tremaine Mack, who is the nation's leading kickoff returner, averaging 39 and a half yards per return. I would think that would be an excellent idea. We talked to head coach George Welch yesterday for Virginia Cavaliers. He said, we're either going to kick it very high or we're going to kick it away from him. On that play, they kicked it away from him. And I think it's very intelligent. You've got Illegal a guy that can return him almost 40 yards, keep it away from him. Finish 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. That was a very big call back to the 10 yard line. That's where the Hurricanes will have it. First down 10, leading in the game 14 7, three minutes and one second. The clock ticking very slowly here. The ball has been in the air a lot, and there have been four turnovers already in the game and a multitude of penalties. Limits numbers 105 yards, one interception. Rodney Barber picked him off with one TD pass. And they hand off to Trent Jones, who wears number six. Single-digit numbers are, are in vogue in college football now. Trent's a junior, 5'7". All the players want those single-digit numbers. We talked to Edgar and James yesterday, and I said, why, and you asked him, why does he wear number 32? Is there any particular reason? He goes, no, I'd rather have number 3, 4, or 5, but somebody has those numbers. But when you look at this, Butch Davis, the head coach of the Miami Hurricanes, he revolves these running backs. He takes a different running back each time, possibly each series. They have to get something going. Right now, Daryl McMillan's not doing the job. Five carries, minus one yard. Double tight end, second down, four. Ah, Virginia's fired up after getting that touchdown. Trent Jones is stopped for no gain, possibly a loss on the play. Trent Jones, by the way, is a solid pass protector. He's also a good receiver out of the backfield. He is only 5'7", though, and has run for 329 yards on the year. But the play that got the starter was the penetration by Travis Griffith. When the defense gets penetration, it's difficult for the offense to run the ball effectively. And what Virginia does is they penetrate, they attack. They attack every single down, and that's why George Waltz says this is the best defense he's had. We have a Miami timeout. Ryan Clement making the call with 1.48 to go in the first period. 
As you look at Butch Davis, assistant with the Dallas Cowboys, uh, Jimmy Johnson proponent, would you say, Mark? Oh, without a doubt. And <laughs> we talked about that, and he's got two world championship rings, and he's got a University of Miami NCAA championship, and, and this guy's a winner. He's a definite winner. He's proved it in the past, and he's got the influence of Jimmy Johnson. He was with him at Oklahoma State, University of Miami, the Dallas Cowboys, and, and you can see that the way he prepares his team. They're very aggressive, and they love to play special teams. He's on the wish list of a lot of NFL teams who are firing coaches left and right, and I got a great kick out of his response in front of his quarterback yesterday <laughs> when you and I met with him and you said I want to ask you last question are you going to the NFL he said no <laughs> without a doubt he but was I'm, clear wasn't it? but I'm pretty sure if Ryan Clement wasn't in the room he would have got a different answer <laughs> By the way, join TBS for more football action Saturday, January 18th. You'll be seeing some of these players in there. That's the college classic, the Senior Bowl. Bringing together a field of college all-stars, the Senior Bowl pits north against south at historic Glad Memorial Stadium. Pat Hayden and Vern Lundquist will bring you that action. Live from Mobile, Alabama, beginning at 2 p.m. College football continues with the Senior Bowl Saturday, January 18th, right here on TBS 35. Miami from their 15. Penalty marker down, free play again, resulted in a touchdown last time. This is Gator at the 50, has to be Poindexter, who got some help, and they collar him around the 40. Wally Rainer came down and got him, but again, a 45, it looked like deja vu on the free play on the offside that got them the 70-yard touchdown to open this ballgame. Deja vu all over again, and Virginia has to concentrate. They can't relax, and there's a penalty. Sometimes defenders relax. Offside, defense. It is decline, first down. You take a free shot. When the defense jumps off sides, throw the ball deep. That's what Ryan Clement does. He gets excellent pass protection from his offensive line, sets in the pocket, steps up, and throws the ball downfield to Tony Gator. And Tony Gator, what does he do? Makes a run after the catch. That's what all these great Miami wide receivers do. Yeah, I know he's happy here at Miami, the Hurricanes, but just think what kind of marketing career he could have up in Gainesville in Florida. <laughs> a first down 10 from the 40. Hurricanes. And off to Trent Jones, who tries the middle of the ball. Came loose down there. It's picked up by Virginia. And their number three comes up with a big play. That's Anthony Poindexter, all ACC. Oh, my. He led all ACC defensive backs and tackles and big plays, and that's five turnovers in this first quarter. Three for Miami, two for Virginia. This is a game marred by turnovers, but it's number three on both sides of the ball. Poindexter says, hey, Tremaine Mack comes up with a big play, I can come up with a big play, and he's Johnny on the spot. You're going to see the ball being knocked loose right here in this replay. Here it is. It gets knocked loose, jarred loose, and everybody's going after the ball, but number three, Anthony Poindexter, he's the one that scoops it up. Cavaliers first and 10 at their own 48-yard line. Aaron Brooks just coming off a touchdown pass back in behind center. No, Tim Sherman is back in the game. Go figure. <laughs> and the handoff goes to about the 48-yard line. Uh, Tim Sherman, you know, I was, I was virtually certain that Aaron Brooks would stay in the ball game. But when we talked... When we talked to George Welch, he said, you know, you'll see me shift these fellas back and forth as you look at Tom Sherman, Tim Tim's dead. dead. Yep. And, and that probably helps in the decision of putting him back in there because he makes better decisions on the line of scrimmage. He can audible out there, and that's why George Welch likes him out there. Second and five from the Miami 47-yard line. Out to the left side, Thomas Jones couldn't hold on to it. You know, five turnovers already. This has been a wacky... Oh, well, there's the answer. Right there, a full moon. That's nearly a full moon. It's enough to count, I think. I would think so. That's the only reason why we got five turnovers tonight. Uh, moon over uh, the South Florida. It's sort of Miami, Fort Lauderdale. There's the turnover story. Three for the Hurricanes. Two for Virginia. 35 seconds to go in the first period. This will be third down five for the Cavaliers. Thomas Jones got about three inside the 45 to about the 44-yard line. James Burgess, all Big East middle linebacker, second leading tackler for the Hurricane, steps up to make the play in the middle. Number 54, Burgess, senior. 
in Homestead, Florida. You and I almost went to Homestead on our way to the stadium yesterday. <laughs> we got just a little bit lost coming to the stadium yesterday. And the Cavaliers can't convert Will Bryce into punt again with four seconds, three seconds, and Clark counting down. He's going to get it away before the period comes to an end. The left footer. Look at the hang time. End of the end zone, it'll be a touchback, and that'll be the final play of the first quarter. It has been wild and woolly, but who's complaining? It's a bowl game. It's the holiday season. It's South Florida. I'll be on Mark May. Thanks, Craig. Syracuse, uh, Mark, the players weren't exactly thrilled to be in that after that loss to Miami. No, they weren't. As a matter of fact, the seniors voted not to even accept the bowl invitation at all and just stay home for the holidays. Miami running the ball. They have only a net two yards rushing going into this period. They got a little more that time with Trent Jones. So we have two number sixes running in the backfield now. Trent Jones for Miami and Thomas Jones for Virginia. The Jones game. That's, yes. Like you said, it's in vogue. You've got to have those single-digit numbers. But what I'm looking forward to is Edgar and James. When he gets in the game, he's special. There's Trent. 5'7", 184 pounds, four TDs. This ties for the team lead. This is second down two at the Miami 28-yard line. Hurricanes leading in the game, 14 to seven. Clement hands it off to Jones again. Nice cut off a good block. Gets it out near the 30-yard line. Has to cross the 30 for the first down. And that block was made by Rick Perry. He's their Havlicek. We used to have a guy with the Redskins, Riley McKenzie, was, he was our sixth guy. We call him the Havlicek Hog. Well, Rick Perry's the Havlicek Hog for this offensive line. He can play center. He can play both guards and both tackles. He's in the game right now. He just provided the block for the running back, Trent Jones, to pick up the first down. They gave him the first down. Yeah, it's a 6'6", 345-pound tackle. There's number 73. He was suspended the first four games on some disciplinary measures by Butch Davis, who has been really ruling with an iron fist since he took over the program at the University of Miami last year. And he didn't miss pregame at 345. <laughs> I guess Dead not. Ball, ball start on the offensive line, five-yard penalty. Move Miami back, and speaking of the troubles, they're well documented at Miami. Butch Davis came in and wanted to establish discipline, wanted to get academics back, wanted to change the, the image, the perception of this Miami football team. He suspended their leading receiver, uh, who had an assault charge against him uh, prior to this season for the entire season, Jamie German. And since then, there have been 12 players suspended for a game or more for disciplinary reasons. Under pressure, Clement goes down. It's got to be a linebacker, sure. James Ferrier. You betcha. James Ferrier, Ferrier was very smart on this play. He had contain on this. He stayed at home. He didn't go for any of the fakes. Here you're going to watch him in the reverse angle. Here he is blitzing upfield. He stays in contain where he's coached to stay. He watches the ball, and he gets the sack on quarterback Ryan Clemens. Ferrier, the senior from Ettrick, Virginia. He's listed, by the way, as about the seventh-ranked linebacker in Lindy's NFL draft preview, and uh, that could be a first-rounder, possibly. I think it will. I think linebackers are deep this year in the NFL draft. He's got an opportunity to go first. 14-yard loss. Clement, though, has a man open, but overthrows him. Out near midfield, going for Tony Gator, their fastest wide receiver. You see that sometimes when you're backed up that far, and that is backed up third and 30. And this time they won at Rondé Barber, and that's probably a mistake because he's the best cover guy that Virginia has, and lately he's been picking on Joe Williams. I'm surprised he won at Rondé on that play. Rondé, as we talked with him yesterday, as we did Tiki, and by the way, we'll continue to update you on Tiki, who has the bruised hip, the hip pointer from a tackle made earlier and hasn't returned to action since then. We talked to Rondé, and we said, what are you thinking about? He said, I'm thinking about Tony Gator and Yatil Green. And that's all he has to think about because he knows those wide receivers from Miami have tremendous speed, and they can get downfield in a hurry. Third and 30 from the Miami 11. From a lot of time, safety valve. He goes to Jones. About six or seven yards, but only out to the 17-yard line where Ferrier is over there to make the tackle. And Clement got excellent protection from his offensive line. He was able to look to his third receiver, the outlet battle, his running back, Trent Jones, out of the backfield. And the guys up front are starting to do the job for the Miami Hurricanes. They're starting to give the quarterback some time to throw the ball, and they're moving the ball on the ground. Here's Andy Crossland, a redshirt freshman from oh, Dallas, oh, Texas who kicks and punts for Miami. But Butch Davis says he's looking for a punter as Crossland is primarily a kicker. And not a very good punt that time. Right at midfield, and Thomas Jones makes the catch there. The Cavs have to see the stadium. Bye. Mark, you and I got a look at them looking at the tape of Virginia's final game and, and others, too. 
But Virginia Tech is a very solid and potentially explosive football team. Here's a play fake. The attempted pass is dropped by Walt Derry. Tim Sherman threw it a little low. Derry not known for his catches on the season only 10 receptions in 11 games and, and it's even early in the game but sometimes you sit here and you watch a game and you have to wonder Bob why isn't Aaron Brooks in this game I mean he did a tremendous job in the series he was in there threw for a great touchdown reception to Jermaine Crowell how come they took him out of this football game he's the hot hand the hot quarterback stay with the hot guy you know you would expect this to be controversial Tim Sherman the son of receivers coach Tom Sherman there are those who think he has favoritism Welch completely denies it of course knowing George Welch's reputation I don't think there would be any here is the handoff to Thomas Jones remember he coughed it up to Tremaine Mack who returned it for a 79 yard touchdown to give Miami their 14 points their second touchdown he replaced Tiki Barber when he injured his hip to see Holmes made the tackle there's Tiki and you know he looks like he's in less pain maybe they did tape an aspirin to his hip possibly two or three hip pointers are quite painful I couldn't walk for two days after I had my first one this is third and nine from the Miami 49 yard line two receivers to the left one to the right side this is Owen in motion Sherman Sherman misses him badly you know, talk about a quarterback controversy. I mean, you've got to wonder. I think you raised an excellent point. Aaron Brooks, who came in and threw the touchdown pass, not in the ballgame. Now, there's an unhappy camper right there that Tim Sherman's father, Tom. And the wide receiver did slip on that play. But I think we're going to see Aaron Brooks come back in this game. He's got the hot hand. He's got to be back in there. Anybody that can put points on the board and, and any scoring drive in any capacity should be playing football and should be on the football. Bryce for his fourth punt of the day. He can hammer it. Remember, Bryce was an All-American last year. He fell off a little bit this year, but was still all ACC. That's going to be down as it took a Miami bounce just outside the 20. Only a 28-yard punt after we were bragging about Will Bryce. Everybody on the Virginia offense, they're looking here on punt protection, looking for Tremaine Mack. But the other guy gets through and almost blocks it. Bet you that's definitely in the back of his mind, but still wearing those colors for the University of Virginia and the Commonwealth of Virginia. He wants to go back and play because he doesn't want those teammates down. Miami try to get something going on the ground, and here's that freshman, the true freshman, Edgerin James, in only 18 years old, and he gets his first carry of the night. Here's the story on Edgerin James. He's 6'1, 220 pounds, averages six and a half yards of carry, and the coaches talk about vision when they talk about Edgerin James. And he's got great vision, particularly the way that he runs the football. He's a high stepper, and you'll watch him run. He runs so fluidly, it looks like he's not even moving. And when you see backs do that, they're gobbling up big chunks of yardage, and this kid does the same thing. The eye slot left formation for the Hurricanes. Prior to that carry, the Hurricanes had only a minus one yard rushing total up to the game. James comes in and already gets them up to around 10. Once again, an encounter on the field. There's Casey Jones. A lot of people consider him the best college center in the nation this year. You see, not only that, Casey Jones is smart. He's an offensive lineman. If you're going to give a guy a couple of shots, you give him a couple of shots and walk away because when he retaliates and hits you in the back, that's when they throw the penalty. Who started the myth that the smartest players are offensive linemen? I do, of course. <laughs> no, but it had to be from an offensive lineman without a doubt. But on this offense, the guys that call the signals are one, Casey Jones, and two, Ryan Clement. They call the audibles. They talk to each other and talk to the rest of the line. This is third down and one at the Miami 30. Jumbo formation. Penalty marker is down. Looked like the freshman tight end. It was the extra tight end in there to block. Mondrell Fulcher may have moved. If so, it'll bring up third and six. Clement got the first down. There's the call against the Hurricanes. Butch Davis, intensity, capital I. Capital I. When I met him yesterday, Illegal I was very motion. impressed when I talked to him. On the offense, on the offensive line, it's a five-yard penalty. We'll see third down. And just talking to him, you could tell it in his eyes that he's intense. And, and you can tell when, when a guy's been there, you can you know it when you see him. You can see it in his eyes. And, you know, he was a great guy. He's a great competitor. When, you, when we interviewed him and talked to him, you could just see him getting excited about his players, excited about the program at Miami. He's very proud of the accomplishments he's made. I asked him if I could return punts today. I got so excited. <laughs> Declined. 
Third down six, three wideouts in for the Hurricanes from their own 25. Across the middle, it's caught by Chris Jones. Out to the 48, Poindexter makes the tackle. Gain of 23. We're talking about Casey Jones, their tremendous center. Here he is right here. Watch Casey Jones, the center. He's going to help out. Watch the hand placement right there, right in between the numbers, right at the end. Keep an eye on him. He'll come across and clean it up. Throw guys on the ground. you got to like that about an offensive lineman. When you put a defensive lineman down, hey, that's a plus. doesn't matter if he trips or stumbles. If you throw him on the ground, it's a plus. Mark, by NFL standards, he's a small center, 6'1", 265. But he's in the image and the size of Mark Stepnowski of Perennial Pro Bowl in the NFL. He's perfect size for Stepnowski. Enough said. First and 10 from the 47. Running it over the right side, Andrew James, the rookie, goes down. Maybe a gain of a yard. James Barrier came up to meet the 18-year-old. Ferrier looks like a warrior. I keep wanting to call him James Warrior. Well, we found out from the beginning of the game, he was right out there in the middle of that skirmish with Miami. He wasn't going to let his players get injured out there in the middle of a fight. He wanted to get in the middle of it and break it up. And he was throwing a couple shots in there. But when you look at Ferrier, he's been all over the field. I mean, this guy's at the top of the list of the NFL scouts. We said that. But he's a real competitor. He likes to stick his nose in there and hit people and track them down. And he's got the speed and the agility to do it. Out of the eye now. Second down nine. Play fake points under pressure. Gets rid of it. First down at the 40-yard line. And that's Magic Benton, a sophomore from Miami, Florida, gain of 12 yards. And you say, Magic Benton, was he named after Magic Johnson? I don't think so. How about being named after, as you look at the pressure, we'll tell you where his name came from, but watch this pressure from Jamie Sharper, number 33. Watch him, he'll hurdle the fullback and go over top of him and put pressure on Clements, but just a little bit too late. But Virginia's getting closer and closer, and you've got to watch Magic Benton. He just runs a little curl pattern. He hooks right there, turns around, and catches the ball. Let's call him Magic City Grill Benton. And we'll come back and tell you why. Out of the eye on the first and 10 from the 40. Here's Edger and James. You see he's a star in the making at Miami. The 18-year-old gets nine years. Back to Magic Benton. Named Magic because his dad loves a place called the Magic City Grill. And he wanted to call him Magic City. And his mom says, no, that's too much. But Magic's okay. What do you think of that? Well, I'm sure glad his dad didn't hang out at Hoos. <laughs> nice name. The second down to two for Magic Number eight, Magic Bet. Started the first three games, had 100 yards in each of those games, but kind of got in the doghouse. The coach here, here's an inside handoff for the first down run. That's to Carlo Joseph, the fullback who trades time with Nick Williams. James, though, four carries, 18 yards. And Miami, when he came into the game, Miami had 13 carries with negative one yard rushing. It's really turned around. And that's why you've got to have a guy with his explosiveness in the ball game because he can break one. But the great thing about it is he can run between the tackles and move the pile because an arm tackle is not breaking down. He's listed at 6'1", 220. I'll swear he doesn't look that big. We saw him in his T-shirt and shorts yesterday on the first down 10. Out of the eye. Play fake. Clements under pressure. There's his man at the seven-yard line. It's Tony Gay. 23-yard completion. Oh, you like the fire in Ryan Clement. He's another in a long line from quarterback U. And that's the one thing George Walsh, the head coach of Virginia, and Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, were worried about. Clement's ability to scramble in the pocket, to move the pocket, and to throw on the run. Here he'll run to his right. He'll still look downfield. He'll concentrate on throwing the ball. Jumps and throws a jump pass and completes it downfield. He's done this time and time again this season. Here it is. Look at the defensive back slip. We talk about the field being wet. They need to get tighter on the wide receivers, but that's not the fault of Rondé Barber. That's the fault of the field. First and goal at the six. Here's Edger and James. Slip, fell forward. Got to about the one-yard line. Clement has been on fire. 11 of 14, 212 yards in the air for Ryan Clement. And, of course, that began with the 70-yard Touchdown to Yatiel Green, but this man has turned around the ground game for Miami since he entered the game. They needed a spark and they got it from him, but when you look at Ryan Clement in this offense, we talked to Butch Davis about it, this is a little bit Dallas Cowboy, a little bit Green Bay Packer, a little bit Washington Redskins. It's a very diversified offense. They like to spread the ball around. They've got 11 receivers and double-digit receivers. Second and goal from the one, James and Williams in the backfield. 
James. Look at the pursuit. Five blue jerseys. Throw the 18-year-old freshman for a loss back to the three-yard line. And you see Stephen Phelan. What a story. A walk-on at Virginia. And he walked his way into a starting safety spot. And when you look at this play, this is a freshman mistake. Watch James. He should take the ball and head straight ahead. He's trying to make something out of nothing. But the pursuit and the quickness of the Virginia Cavaliers catches up with him. Here he should take the ball and go straight ahead. But he doesn't. He tries to make something out of nothing and get to the edge. But too many Virginia defenders are there. Yeah, now it's going to be third down goal back from the three-yard line. And Ryan Clement makes his second timeout call of this game with 4.44 to go the talent unfortunately 13 years of it I feel it every day you're up here stretching your back you can't you can't sit there long I understand how that is my throat has that same kind of <laughs> wear and tear. third and goal at the Virginia three Miami leading 14 7 Tyrell McMillan in the backfield now as they stagger and spread the backs and the tight end goes in motion to limit quick toss into the end zone broken up you could hear the pop from up here and Yatil Green is slow getting up. He took a whammy of a pop from Sam McKeever and the most ferocious hitter on the Virginia secondary, Anthony Poindexter. You can see Green. He's hurting just like you were talking about, Mark. Absolutely. When you watch this play, the Virginia defense smells this. It's going to be a quick slant right here. They're right on top of it. And he may have had a little hold Ooh. on there, Sam McKeever, but the little guys make big collisions. Watch number three, Anthony Poindexter. Bam! Right there. Uh, big did collision. Get, did he get there early? Just a wee bit. Hey, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. He didn't get caught. Crossland in. He has missed four of his last six field goal attempts. This one's only from 20 yards, but it is from the far left side hash mark. Crossland knocks it through. And it is 17 to 7. The Hurricanes take a 10 point lead with four minutes and 36 seconds remaining in the first half from Pro. Uh, the, the tradition at Boston College of the uh, of the eagle tattoo on the posterior section of the anatomy for some of the players. And I wonder if you'll have to join in that tradition. I heard rumors that players are taking a collection from the coach. <laughs> at the 10-yard line, Terrence Wilkins out to the 26-yard line, back to Craig Sager. Well, we do a lot of NBA games. Del Harris tried to get in with his players, the Lakers, by getting a tattoo. Bob Neal wants to know if you want to follow up with that BC tradition and have your uh, <laughs> rear tattooed like the players at BC. Well, I'll have to check the players out first to make sure that's a tradition, and then I'll have to think about it. We talked to you before. You've had a lot of opportunities. In fact, before Gary Barnett turned Northwestern's program around, you had an interview up there. Why didn't you take the Northwestern job? Because you were a graduate, and I like BC guys better. No. <laughs> <laughs> But obviously, BC has a little bit of a tradition. Can you turn that one around? I believe so. I don't think it's that far from being an excellent program. Uh, they had a couple down years, but it's, you know, three years ago, they were in a bowl, so it's a great opportunity. I think we can get it turned around and get back to a bowl. I wish you the best of luck. Let's go back to Bob. Looks like Wilkins. Thanks, Craig. It looks like Terrence Wilkins was shaken up on that play. You see him here, shaken up, so maybe putting it mildly on the kickoff return. Sophomore from Alexandria. Here's the replay, and this is a very hard-hitting game. It started off at the beginning of the game, even before they took the field, before the kickoff, and look at the hits here. He took a hit to the helmet. You can see he's probably knocked a little bit woozy, and when that happens, he'll be back in the game, but you can see he's trying to clear his eyes when you're knocked out like that. Your vision isn't very clear. Not that I've been knocked out like that, but that's what they tell me. Miami leading at 17-7. to Tough out pass out to the left side, one of the hardest throws to make in football at this level Brian Owen catches the ball thrown by Tim Sherman that's dangerous pass there's Brian Owen he's a junior he how about this Brian Owen Virginia has all kinds of stories like this throughout their history they just have never been this good before in their history this is a former walk-on kicker but they found out he runs a 4 6 40 when you find guys with that athletic ability, especially a kicker, he should be playing someplace else. Not to get on kickers, but especially a kicker. Second down three. That's yeah, close to the first down. Daryl Medley, the fullback. He's a senior uh, who can play tailback some, as you see the cut on Daryl Medley there, 6'2", 235. That's a pro size running back body. It definitely is, and he's a great blocking fullback. That's why he's in there. He's Tiki Barber's best friend besides the offensive line. Speaking of Tiki, with his helmet back, he's up. 
close to the sideline, maybe edging back in. He had four carries for only seven yards before he got the hip pointer. We don't know if he'll return to this game or not. This is first and ten from the 36. The play fake. Dropped by Medley. Wearing 34, Walter Payton's number. He should catch that. It's those type of <laughs> and it's those type of plays that drive you crazy. I mean, the ball hits you right in the chest. That's why he's only had two receptions this year. He's not a great pass receiver, but the ball hits him right in the numbers. He's supposed to catch that ball. And plus, he heard the footsteps of Tremaine Mack. If anybody hears those footsteps, you've got to get out of the way. You know the hit's coming. Tremaine just couldn't not hit it. He had to. It's in his blood. It's in his system. It's like the scorpion joke. It's in his system. Second and ten from the 36-yard line. They give it to Daryl Medley again, who's now playing at the tailback spot. We, they told us that he could be playing some at that position because Tiki Barber's hurt. Thomas Jones had, had come in and fumbled the ball, has been playing tentatively, actually, the true freshman. And there's a look at Wilkins, who was shaken up on the kick return. After Thomas Jones ripped off that long run, I'm surprised we're not seeing more of him. Even though he's a freshman, he's played well. He's fumbled the ball one time at Cross Virginia, but he's also kept them in the game with that big run. Third and six from the 40. Sherman. That's picked off by Tremaine Mack. Kiss him <laughs> goodbye. We told you to watch Tremaine Mack and his propensity for big plays. A fumble recovery that he took 79 yards for a TD. And now the interception, 42 yards. And it's 23 to 7. And keep an eye on Tremaine Mack. He's watching the wide receiver, Jermaine Crowell, and he's watching the quarterback. The quarterback doesn't look anything off. He knows the route before Jermaine Crowell knows it. He breaks on the ball, an excellent break on the ball, snatches it in and takes it in for his second touchdown of the evening. Big plays, the story of this game. 2.34 to go in the half. 70-yard touchdown pass. There's the point after. A 79-yard fumble recovery touchdown and a 42 yard interception touchdown and those are the three Miami touchdown scores here's another look at Mr. Tremaine Mack from Tyler Texas watch the quarterback Tim Sherman he's not even looking off he throws it right out there Tremaine Mack keeps an eye on it intercepts it and he's yelling on the sidelines he wants one more interception for number three kickoff the line drive comes up to the up back out to the 30 out to the 35 and the 40 <laughs> that is number nine Shannon Taylor all the way to the 17 yard line Shannon Taylor the backup linebacker who is a red shirt freshman took it 58 yards. I'll tell you what, he's a backup linebacker as a freshman. Since the injury of Tiki Barber, maybe they should move him to running back. Watch him here. He's making some great moves with the football. This is an exciting football game we've had. Big hits, turnovers, interceptions for touchdowns, and returns like this. What more can you ask for from a bowl game? Shannon Taylor, who's played very little this year, really, but in the small playing time, has an interception and two sacks and was ACC Rookie of the Week versus Duke. Cavaliers down 24-7. They're going back to Thomas Jones. About three to about the 17-yard line. Kenny Holmes, who's back in there. Remember, he was shaken up earlier. Number 90. 54, you see there, is James Burgess. But take a look, Mark, at Butch Davis. Watch. He's upset because he coaches special teams. He emphasizes special teams, and he can't believe that Virginia got a return against his special teams. He's got a rule. Every starter has to be on at least one special team. This will be second down eight from the 18-yard line. Split backs for the Cavaliers. Sherman hands it to Jones. Quick acceleration down near the 12-yard line. Line to make for the first down is at the 10. This would be a very big score if Virginia can get it in here. Remember, they went 14 quarters with only two touchdowns as they closed out the season. 
and this is a confidence builder with less than a minute and 30 left. They've got to punch this in to stay in this ball game. If they can't get seven here, it's going to be a downer for Virginia going in the locker room and uplifting for Miami because they're going to be able to hold them inside the red area. Now the red zone has not been their friend. Third down two. They give it to the youngster. He doesn't get it. He loses it. He's anything. Thomas Jones hit first by Tony Coley. Coley number 47, and you see James Burgess getting off the play, too. Coley's their strong side linebacker. Burgess plays in the middle. Twan Russell on the other side, and they're very balanced defensively with that linebacking core. They definitely are, but with Virginia, this is a situation where they miss the experience of Tiki Barber in here. Tiki Barber's been their best player in the red area. Watch Coley right here, the right end. He's going to get the penetration and stop this play. He's got to beat the block of the fullback, then he's got to get penetration, and he's in on the tackle. That's great play by the outside linebacker, Coley. Virginia 0 of 6 on third downs. This is fourth down and two. And Tim Sherman says, give me the timeout, coach. This is fourth and a long two at the Miami 12. After the timeout, 27 seconds to go in the half. Sherman had his man wide open. There was some kind of mix-up because he didn't get the ball to Crowell. Crowell was there, could have caught it, would have been a first down. They didn't connect miscommunication and, and they took a time out to discuss this play and here's his father Tom he's a little upset by that because one crow was wide open for the first down and two the quarterback Tim Sherman didn't throw it there they weren't on the same page he thought he was going out and the wide receiver ran it in and that's why this was not completed for the first down here you're going to see the wide receiver he's wide open right there and he's wondering where the ball is just thrown way behind him Sherman only three of ten for 27 yards and one interception See him talking on the phone maybe to his dad. There's Aaron Brooks who came in, went two of four for 40 yards and a touchdown, and we haven't seen him again. And I just saw George Wilson, head coach, turn and nod to him, and he nodded back, so it looks like he may start the second half. 20 seconds to go in the half, and Miami is just going to take a knee here and let this clock run out. The Hurricanes, they were kind of a stiff wind for much of the season, but... The gusts are picking up here, 24 to 7. Miami leading at halftime of the seventh annual CarQuest Bowl. Big return. Yeah, Miami, I should have said, Miami won the toss and deferred. They are going to get it back, leading 24 to 7. Here is the kickoff. It's a good one, angling it away once again from Mack. And Marcus Wimberly made what probably and is a bad decision. Smart play by Virginia, though. They kept it low, kicked it away from Tremaine Mack. He's already had two big plays in the first half. They don't want to make it three on a kickoff return. There's Wimberly. He was knocked down at about the 11-yard line. And out comes Miami on offense. Ryan Clement had himself a whale of a first half. I like the way he plays. We said at the beginning of the broadcast, he's a quarterback with a linebacker mentality. We might mention, and there's Tiki who's warming up, and uh, George Welch said he hoped to get him back in the ballgame. But speaking of Ryan Clement, you know, he's pushed by his backup, Scott Covington, also. And he had the biggest day of a Miami quarterback this year, 22 for 29 for 295 yards against Boston College. Slot right formation out of the eye. Hand off Dyro McMillan. McMillan all the way out to the 19-yard line. Anthony Poindexter stepped up to make the hit. Well, it's more important about Tiki Barber is George Walsh, the head coach of Virginia Cavaliers, said he's about 7, 8 feet and he'll probably be back. But we just talked to his mom up here in the booth, and she said, Tiki's a tough kid. He will be back. So look to see him in the second half of this game. Now, Mrs. Barber's still up here in the booth with us watching the ball game. She's about to get her master's degree. I believe herself. Talk about her smart young men. They have a trendsetter there, a standard setter in their mom. Second down to Miami. Inside half handoff to the up back, Nick Williams at the 20. He certainly didn't get the first down. 24-7, Miami. Miami scored about every way you could think of. Fumble, recovery, return. There's mom. There's, uh, as we say, the Geraldine Barber, Tiki and Rondi's mom. With, uh, how about uh, how about Rondi going to the NFL? Well, how about giving us a nod? Is Rondi going to the NFL this year? <laughs> <laughs> Just like a mother. No, Just thought we'd try she, to sneak she's that not question tell in. Us. <laughs> and here's Tiki on the sideline stretching out. I sure hope we get to see him. There's Rondi. Where's number 19? He's the left cornerback. This is third down and two. And Edger and James is knocked down in the backfield. I think that's Edger and James who came in. No, it's Daryl McMillan who started the game. 
He's the sophomore tripped up by Stephen Phelan. We're expecting to see Edger and James Moore, and uh, they may have wished they had had the youngster in there on this play, but it's Daryl McMillan who stopped by the Virginia defense. And Daryl McMillan has had a good night, but watch right here, Phelan, number 49. He gets penetration in the backfield, and when you've got a free safety that gets penetration like that, he is close to the line of scrimmage, and that's Virginia, the attack style of defense. They've got those guys in the eight-man box, and we'll talk about that later. Crossland, second punt, low snap. They got it! Virginia I think the man who got it was Dwayne Stooks, number five. Could have been Poindexter, too. Let's take a look. That yeah, was Poindexter. And we expected Tremaine Matt to make a block and, and recover for a touchdown. It's the other number three, Anthony Poindexter. Wow, what a play. Look where they put it down at the one-yard line. And here's the block. Keep an eye on number three. He's on the outside. He's going right for the ball. He's ahead of her. He splits the two blockers and lays out the exact way you want to lay out. You don't lay out to the kicker. You lay out to where the ball's going to be. And Anthony Poindexter does a tremendous job of blocking this kick. What a great play. And now the Cavaliers down 24-7. And Brooks is in at quarterback. First and goal from the one. Brooks keeps it. However, whistles. Hold everything. And for Miami got a timeout. Oh, the Cavalier fans didn't like it. Neither did George Welch. So timeout Miami. Well, there goes the uh, surprise of the Aaron Brooks dive on the keeper. And here's the block kick. Watch number three and number five came in. But number three, Anthony Poindexter is the man who got it. And Poindexter is the big play man. He'll be coming right through here. Watch him. And if you keep an eye on Poindexter, he splits the blockers. And he's even being held. Look at his face mask. Right here, look at his face mask. He's being blocked and he's being held on his face mask. But he lays out with his right arm and blocks that punt. An outstanding play by Anthony Poindexter, the senior from the University of Virginia. And that is his third blocked punt of this year. He's a big play man too, so number three happens to be the number for the big team special teams players. Of course, Tremaine Mack and now Anthony Poindexter, who is only a sophomore. And there's a chance that the punter was shaken up on that play, Andy Crossland. Maybe he just has a broken heart. No, it's his, it's his ankle. <laughs> it's his ankle. And you know, this is, that's significant because remember now, Crossland is also their kickoff man. I will say this, George Gaetan is a pretty good kicker. He's the backup a walk-on, so they wouldn't be without. They're going to go to the same play again and get the touchdown again with Aaron Brooks. So Aaron Brooks gets his fourth rushing touchdown on the year, and we have a 24-13 game coming up with the point after. About to happen with Rafael Garcia, one of the best kickers in the nation. Second team All-American, as a matter of fact. There's Aaron Brooks, so he scored a touchdown and thrown for a touchdown in only, well, he had four passes he threw, and now this one keeper. Absolutely, and he's a playmaker. He's got the hot hand. I stated this in the first quarter. George Welsh has got to keep him in the ballgame. He's the only way Virginia can come back and win this game. Well, Virginia's down 10 again now. 24 to 14, Hurricanes. What a wild and wacky game, the seventh annual CarQuest Bowl. Brooks got the touchdown. Well, we haven't had a safety, and we haven't had Tremaine Mack return one from a kickoff because they're kicking away from him. If we get that, then we'll have everything in this ball game. Tremaine Mack and Wimberley are back and in and out of the end zone. And now the Miami lead has been cut to 24 to 14 with 12.38 to go in the third quarter from Pro Player Stadium. We talked about in the first half, and Virginia had the ball inside the red area. They had an opportunity to kick a field goal or go for the touchdown. And we talked about that earlier. They needed to put points on the board because in this situation, if they get a touchdown going into the halftime, they're only down by three points. And they should have at least gone for the field goal on fourth down. I, I can't disagree with going for the touchdown, but at least put some points on the board. Don't walk away with nothing. Senior Jermaine Chambers is in and split on wide on the left side for Miami. Coming back from knee surgery, missed the final three games, but... He's not going to have an opportunity to catch the ball. Jamie Sharper, Wally Rayner, those linebackers raining is a good idea because they're pouring right now. Three Virginia sacks in this game. Watch Sharper come in from the offensive left side, the defensive right. He beats the blocker of the offensive back right there, goes around and puts a hand on the quarterback, Ryan Clement. Gets a little help on the end from Wally Rayner, but that was all Jamie Sharper on that play. Now Virginia not ready to step out of this 
football game. Down 24-14. 12 minutes to go in the quarter. Lost nine on the play. This is second down 19 for the Hurricanes. Clement. No pressure at all. Is it picked? Almost intercepted by Rondé Barber. Tony Gator was the intended receiver. I thought Barber was going to have a goal line and a hit line. And that would have been a touchdown if Rondé picks this ball up. Watch him. He's on Tony Gator. He knows he's their number one wide receiver because Jatiel Green hasn't come out of the locker room. Here you're going to see him. Stride for stride. Great coverage skills. He plants. He knows the ball is being thrown. He breaks on it right there in front of the wide receiver. If you're Tony Gator, you've got to come back to the ball. But the recovery speed of Rondé Barber, that's why that play was no good for the Miami Hurricanes. How about it went through Barber's hands and then Gator almost caught it. This is third and 19 from the Miami 11. Hurricanes leading 24-14. Third down 19. Clement steps into the pocket. Heady. Deep ball. Incomplete at the 46-yard line. Barber again with the coverage on Tony Gator. The reason Bush, why there wasn't was he was going there. for the ball. The wide receiver wasn't looking at it, but Rondé was going for the ball. And in this situation, how come they're not throwing it? Joel Williams, they're picking on Rondé Barber, their best defensive back. Watch him. He's keeping his eye on the wide receiver, running step for step for him. Look at his eyes. His eyes are on the ball with the receiver, but he's going after the ball. We're wondering if Crossland would punt. Remember, he was shaken up on the block. He got a wobbly kick out there. Not much confidence on that, but it gets a good Miami bounce. And inside Virginia territory down to about the 44-yard line. And the Cavaliers down 10 will have excellent field position after the 45-yard punt. He's back. Aaron Brooks, the quarterback. Tiki Barber wears number 21. He's in the backfield. This is Barber. It gets about four on the first, but there's a penalty marker down. There was some movement there on the defensive side of the ball from Chad Pegues, the defensive tackle, and that is the call offsides against the Hurricanes. SEC officiating crew, by the way, Bill Goss is the referee, the man of the white hat. Offsides, defense, penalties five yards, first down. In case you dialed in late, you've missed most of Tiki Barber because he missed most of the first half with his with his hip pointer. Tiki Barber, the all-time leading rusher in the history of the University of Virginia, he eclipsed the mark that was set by Terry Kirby, now with the 49ers. 3,389 yards career. Went out with six minutes left to go in the first quarter, and now he's back with a sore hip. First and five after the penalty out at the 49-yard line. Barber. Nowhere. Lost a yard or two. Kenny Holmes with a penetration. Talked about this turf being a little loose down there. You think it's loose, Mark? It's very loose. You're going to see right here Tiki Barbie's going to try to cut and make a move, and his feet will slip. He's going laterally right there. See him slip? He can't get that good traction in this ground because in the middle of the field where they resodded it, it's still wet from the rain last night, and it's difficult to get some traction in there. Yeah, got the divots coming up. Tiki, five carries only six yards now. This is second down, six. Thomas back in. He gets it out on the player pass to the right side. Thomas is close to the first down. Thomas Jones gets the ball down to about the 45-yard line for the first down on the flare pass out to the right side. The freshman, Thomas Jones. I think after that earlier fumble, the freshman Thomas Jones is coming into his own. He's got confidence now. He's catching the ball in the backfield. What I'm looking for, you see Aaron Brooks when he drives back in the middle, he's got confidence in his offensive line. He didn't look downfield. He knew he was going to throw a swing pass to his running back, Thomas Jones. Completed the pass. Virginia's got a first down. First and 10 at the 45. This is the seventh time tonight that the Cavaliers have been in Miami territory. That's Crowell in motion. They give it to Thomas Jones. Hit right at the line of scrimmage. Kenny Holmes. We've got him for seven tackles already in this game. Number 90, the senior from Gifford, Florida. And Kenny Holmes, we've talked about him a lot tonight. He's having a competition with the other defensive end, Kennard Line, for the sack title. He thinks he can get him, but watch him on this play. He fights off the tackle, goes to his responsibility, which is contained, comes back in and makes the tackle on the running back, Thomas Jones. Excellent read by Kenny Holmes. Here he is again. Watch him. He fights off the tackle, keys his read, follows it to the end, and makes the tackle. Second down, 10 from the 45-yard line. The play fake. Brooks all day to throw. Missed his target. 
target down at the 29-yard line, Brian Owen. That play fake worked beautifully, and I frankly thought, and I think if Barber had played more in the first half, it would have happened. The play fake is something that they can go with because of the aggressiveness of the upfield rush here of the Miami Hurricanes. Absolutely, and they have to respect the running of Tiki Barber for the play action, but Holmes gets blocked. A great job by the offensive line, but what's nervousness here, the quarterback gets a little nervous, and he steps up in the pocket, and he gets a little jitterbug on his feet because he's not used to having five or six seconds in the pocket to throw the football. And he's thinking about number 90, Kenny Holmes. Third and 10, Virginia 0 for 6 on third down convergence tonight. Third and 10 from the 45. Three wide outs in there. Brooks out of the shotgun. There comes that man Holmes again. Brooks throwing on the run. Missed his receiver. Five players were around Jermaine Crowell. And I think Lang was was the man on the pressure this time, kind of getting even with uh, Kenny Holmes. Well, we talked about that before. They've got a friendly competition, but each of them wants to win. They're very aggressive in this. And can hard line put pressure on quarterback Aaron Brooks, but Aaron Brooks had time to throw that ball. He rolled out of the pocket, gave himself some extra time, but there was no one open downfield to throw the ball to. Will Bryce in to punt. This will be his fifth punt of the day, averaging a little over 41 yards. The left footer. Look at the hang time. The NFL scouts will love this. Dwayne Starks can't go near it. Bounces straight out of bounds. Not good distance, though, at the 24-yard line. That was only 21 yards. 9.20 to go in the third quarter. Miami by 10. Continue to play the way they played in the first half and, and cut down on the turnovers. Back to Bob real quickly. Clement with the handoff. <laughs> Daryl McMillan and back to Craig Sager. Benny, after the great success you guys had at Miami, is it difficult to go to the pros, like go to Detroit, where you lose and you lose your coach? How do you accept losing? <laughs> I tell you what, you never accept losing. Uh, the thing is, um, it's been a very hard adjustment for me, especially Ryan with both being up in uh, Detroit. And, uh, you know, hey, I think Wayne Vaughn's he'll, he'll fall on his feet somewhere. You know, he's a, he's a good guy. And, uh, hey, I wish him uh, nothing but the best. Back to Bob for a second. Second down, 11. Backs in an eye formation. Limit with the play fake. He's got all day to throw. Just missed his flanker, Tony Gator. Nice coverage again, but Rondé Barber back to Craig Singer. Ryan, after all the problems the senior class went through, to have that class come back, endure all the adversity, get the accolades academically, are you proud of the program once again? I'm very proud. Uh, I think once the cane, always a hurricane. I think uh, the things that we went through, uh, a lot of other programs experienced, but uh, just because we're as successful as you are, I think uh, everything we do is blown way out of proportion sometimes. All right, thank you very much. Let's go back to Bob. Miami struggling offensively here in the second half. Third down 11 now. Edger and James in at the eye back spot. He gets the call. See that move? That's the Tony Dorsett look. However, only about three yards for Edger and James. James Ferrier made the tackle, so that's three and out. And Miami will have to punt it away. Here's an end zone look. Watch the during games right here. It's the ISO lead draw. He gets a good block from his fullback right there, but he should just take the ball straight ahead. Don't jitterbug in a hole. Take the ball north and south, and that's a freshman mistake. He'll get used to that as time goes on. Thomas Jones getting away from the ball. Looked to me like one of the Miami players hit it up at the 27. That's where they'll spot it down, probably. We have eight minutes to go in the third quarter. A punt of 52 yards. Hurricanes up by 10 come back and win this game. First down 10 from the 27 now. Aaron Brooks stays in at quarterback. Barber's back in. Here's Tiki right side. Got a little bit of a block and put a little more on his own. Out across the 30 near the 34 yard line. And this is the Miami kicker Crossland who's kicks and punts. Nice nice on that. Oh, you like that? I'm getting pretty good at this. Thank you for Picasso. That, there's probably some special meaning in that cap. I hope so. That's the most beat-up cap I've seen since the one you wore yesterday. At <laughs> it has to be a good luck charm for him. When you have a special hat, you have to wear it. Second down two. Cavaliers down 10, 721 to go in the third period. That's a one in motion. They give it to the up back. That's Charles Kirby. Close to the first down, but he didn't get there. Tiki Barber got hurt with six minutes to go in the first quarter. See the tape on that right side. That's where he was hit. Right there on his thigh. And 
usually when you get a hit like that, you want to keep your thigh pad tight. You want to keep the muscle tight around it. And sometimes when you put pressure on it, it alleviates some of the pain on your hip and your thigh. And that's probably why that pad's there. It's not doing anything more. It doesn't have any padding under there. It's just some tape on there to put pressure on his thigh. This is a man who averaged 123 yards a game rushing this year. You see after that injury, only 14 yards so far. And so far, the Cavaliers have gone as Tiki Barber has gone. It's, what, an inch short of the first down? At most. So this will be third down and about an inch for George Welch's Cavaliers. Butch Davis getting a little concerned. Got the headphones on, Mark. Yes, this game's a little bit closer. He wants to know what his coordinators are calling. He wants to be involved in the play calling now. Virginia 0 for 7 on third down conversions. They should get this one, though. It's only an inch or so. And they do. Aaron Brooks, who is 6'3", falls forward. Brooks might as he grows older and gets more playing time and you can almost bet he'll get more playing time uh, might want to beef up a little bit yeah he needs to gain a few more pounds he needs to get a little stock here as you saw on that quarterback sneak it almost looked like he had the high heels on we used to call this the high heel drills when you watch Ryan Clement run it when he runs a quarterback sneak he bulls his way in there and gets the first down some quarterbacks take a step back and try to pick a hole you can't do that you've got to forcefully put yourself into that hole and drive for the first down he did successfully achieve the first down yardage First and 10 at the 38-yard line. Miami leading by 10. Barber in motion out of the backfield. Brooks is going to throw to Tiki. Gain of about 7 or 8 on the playoff near the 45 to the 46-yard line. Tiki Barber with the catch. And you got to like the way that Aaron Brooks just slung that ball out there. He put some mustard on that pass. A little out to Tiki Barber. You see the Marlon Barnes, that's MB, that's the Miami player who was murdered tragically in the spring in his apartment. Robert Woodis died in the He's got a next one. He's got two on his hands. Second down one. Second down one. From about the 46. There's the play fake to Barber. Brooks under pressure. Gets the first down and goes out of bounds. Quick feed of Aaron Brooks. We're watching a young sophomore mature as this game goes on. He didn't try to force that ball downfield. He just tucked it under his arm, took it down for the first down. A very smart play by the young quarterback, Aaron Brooks. Here's another play at it. He's got to take the ball. Little play action fake. He's going to roll to his left, come back. There's nothing there. He feels the pressure. He's going to scramble to his right. Instead of throwing the ball downfield to try to make a big play, the smart thing is to tuck it away, head for the first down, and get out of bounds. Along with Craig Sager and Mark May, this is Bob Neal from Pro Player Stadium. Seventh annual CarQuest Bowl. Miami led 24 to 7 at the half. A blocked punt and a touchdown. It's 24 14, and now the Cavaliers try to get some back. Not this time. May have been a loss on the play. Runner gets back to the line of scrimmage. It's Thomas Jones carrying the ball. And this is the eighth time Virginia has gone into hurricane territory tonight with two touchdowns to show for it. Well, this is a the time they need to capitalize on this and get some points out of this. Eight times and only two touchdowns. They need more points than that. And you just saw Tuan Russell on that play get great penetration. First team all Big East, and that's why, because he's a smart, heady ball player. He knows how to tackle guys and wrap it up in the backfield. Second and 10 from the 48. Brooks throwing across his body. That's incomplete. Or did he get it? Yeah, he caught it. Great Brian Owen. Earl Little went for the interception, but the catch was made by Brian Owen. Outstanding concentration by Brian Owen. He was covered very well. The defender cut right in front of him, but he keeps his comp concentration and, pick and uh, receives the ball. Here you're going to see Aaron Brooks. He takes a hit from Tawan Russell. Great job on his part in getting that ball out there. Here you go. Here's Owens right there catching that ball. The defender draped all over. Yeah, nice job by the former walk-on kicker, remember. Six feet, 175. He's from Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Mark. I always said those kickers were tough guys. Not. Not. <laughs> I don't think you said that. I don't remember <laughs> reading that quote. Aaron Brooks, 5 of 8 for 67 yards and one TD, and he ran for a touchdown. This is first and 10 at the 37. There's a play fake. Again, time. He's going to tuck it under. Brooks, first down. To the 17 yard. Igniting this Cavaliers team. He got 20 on that one. He got also some sod on his helmet and is a little shaken. 
It's a little bit shaken, but it was a great play by Aaron Brooks. Here's a smart play. We're watching this young man evolve as a quarterback. This is some of the things that Tim Sherman can't do. Watch Aaron Brooks. He's going to make the play fake. He's going to set back in the huddle and look downfield. No one's open. He gets a little nervous because he's got a lot of time. He'll take the ball, tuck it under, and go straight ahead. There he breaks the tackle, and he heads down to make a move right there. Moves to his left, stiff arm. Dives for it for the first down for UVA. And look who came all the way down to finish him off. Kenny Holmes, who also made the big upfield rush. This is first and 10 from the 18. This is Thomas Jones. Diving near the first down stick inside the 10. He got the first down. They're going to say he got to the seven yard line. Burgess got the hit. And here is the true freshman, Thomas Jones. Watch Thomas Jones break contain here. He's going to get outside the end. Holmes right here. The great defensive end from the University of Miami. Watch this. It's a great block by the tight end, Deary. Walt Deary hooks him on the line of scrimmage, allows Thomas Jones to break contain and turn the ball up field for the first down. Deary did a great job on the All-American, Carnell Brown at Virginia Tech. He's an excellent blocking tight end. First and goal at the six. six no gain 413 to go in the quarter butch davis who's gone to the headsets here in the second half nervous he's seen his team held scoreless in this quarter and he saw a blocked putt and virginia score one then he saw his team go three and out ever since quarterback aaron brooks got into the game the momentum has changed now it's on the side of virginia if they can score here this is going to be a heck of a ball game we've had it all in this game now virginia's come back as you said before bob they came back against north carolina now they're starting to show the same signs against Miami. They're coming back to the football, but they're doing it with quarterback Aaron Brooks. This started from the Virginia 27, 11th play of the drive. Second and goal from the six. The fake to Barber. Brooks under pressure. Throws it away. Demetrius Dotson, the true freshman. Also, they have three true freshmen playing on this Virginia football team. Dotson, one of them, but he just threw that one away. Here's a pressure by Kennard Lang. It's going to come from the opposite side. He's going to fake the pitch and roll to his right. Well, Kennard Lang stays at home. He's got contain right there. He's going to put pressure on the quarterback, and he's going to drop Brooks. Now we have third and goal. This has been Virginia's problem. Inability to score the touchdowns in the red zone. Not only that, their third down conversion is very poor. This is an opportunity for them to capitalize in the red area. They've been in the Miami football side of the field eight times and only scored twice. They've got to come away with points, and they really need a touchdown on this drive. And only one parade on third down conversions. This is third and goal from the six. And Brooks goes down back at the 12-yard line. The dam burst. Conley was there, Lang was there. Lang's the man they call the sack man for Miami. And Coley, of course, number 47, the linebacker, they'll give Lang, I think, credit for the for the play. Here's the replay. Here's the blitz right up through the middle. The quarterback, Aaron Brooks, never has a chance. It was just like the offense just gave up. Right here, you're going to see number 47 come in. He's starting before the center snaps. They've got to keep an eye on him. Whenever they're starting to rush in a red area like that, you know they're going to blitz. So at least point the guy out and block him. Look at that. Do you believe it? Another special teams play. You're getting it all in this bowl game. It's incredible. The team Mac did it again. He's done everything tonight. All he's got to do is return one for a touchdown. Here's the kick. It's a hold. It's a bad snap, but he gets it down right there. He comes across the top and puts pressure on the kicker. And I think it was Kenny Holmes that got the block. I think he missed it when he went by him. Right there is T-Mac. No, he gets his right hand on it and knocks it away. Outstanding effort by Tremaine Mack. He's done it all tonight. If this guy isn't the MVP of the Carquist Bowl in the history of the Carquist Bowl, where is it from? We'll have you go chat with the people who pick it up <laughs> if that happens. And now the Hurricanes, who really got themselves well. It was first and goal at the six for the Miami Cavaliers, for the Virginia Cavaliers, and Miami held them. And Edger and Gaines carried on that play. Here, Here it is, is the again. outside guy on the left, and he's going to get a great jump. Jermaine Mack, look at him. Nobody's got to put a hand on him. He gets a great jump and goes around the corner and lays out perfectly to block that field goal attempt. That's the first block, by the way, for Rafael Garcia. 
He was a second team All American kicker. He led the nation in field goals per game. So you don't see much of that. Second down five and just the momentary lapse on the bobbled snap. Clement in trouble. Flush from the pocket. Clement is tripped. Almost goes down and then throws the interception to Rodney Barber from his own 40. Barber back to the 49 yard line. What a game. Miami four turnovers. Virginia three. And that was a great example. Here's the play. Watch quarterback Ryan Clement. He's got an opportunity. He's being chased out of the pocket by Wally Reiner. Watch him run. Here it is. He gets by one tackler, one defender. He keeps his balance. But here's the situation when he should just throw the ball away. Don't try to make a big play. Throw the ball away and come back to fight another day. <laughs> Not gunslinger Ryan Clement. <laughs> he just, sometimes he's his own worst enemy. He just never says die. Ronde Barber, he's Johnny on the spot, and they keep throwing in his direction. For some reason, he's the best defender out there, and they keep taking their shots at him, and he's making them pay for it. Look at the reaction right there by Ronnie Clement. He knows he made the mistake. Great replay. Brooks now to throw. He's going to tuck it, get back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. 24-14 Miami. Minute 27 to go in the third quarter. You said, is there anything else? You know, we we wondered, we, we'd had a punt block, had the interception return, the fumble return. You said maybe a field goal block. Now we, we got, got that. that. Yep. Oh, all we need is Tremaine Mack to return a kickoff for a touchdown. That's the only thing we're really missing in this game. Well, Virginia would not mind giving him a chance if that meant they scored a touchdown. Miami coach is up in the box. Second down eight. Cavaliers from the 48. That's Thomas Jones. Only a couple of yards. Damon Neely made the tackle. Penalty marker is down. That's a personal foul on the Hurricanes. That'll be big. Dead ball and foul after the play. Personal foul on the defense. Penalty be 15 yards from the succeeding spot. Automatic first down. And those are the things, if you're a head coach like Butch Davis, that drive you crazy. You just stop them for a short game, and all of a sudden you do something ridiculous and stu stupid and have some stupidity and commit a personal foul for a first down. Now Virginia's got excellent field position. This is the ninth time Virginia has been in Miami territory. Remember last time, they had it first and goal at the six. Ended up with a blocked field goal attempt. 43 seconds to go in the period. First and 10 from the 32-yard line of the Hurricanes. They're going to try a reverse to Owen, but Miami read it, and Owen goes down. A big loss way back at the 40. It's going to be a loss of about eight yards on the play. Thomas Jones gave it to Brian Owen, and Owen was finally tackled by Damon Neely. Check out Kennard Lang on this play. He gets great penetration down the line of scrimmage. Watch him. He sees it because he's so deep in the line of scrimmage. He puts pressure on the running back, the wide receiver, Brian Owen, on the reverse. And there's no chance for him to get through. There's too much speed, team speed, for the Miami Hurricanes. It's difficult to run a reverse on this team. They lost eight. Second down 18. Five seconds to go in the period. There's Kennard Lang, the sack man, 11 and a half in the regular season. And they're not going to get the playoff. That's the end of the third quarter. Miami leading 24-14. Virginia getting a lot of opportunities. But no third quarter. This is Virginia's defense. Told you they were 15th ranked in the nation, and they're unheralded. No first downs for Miami and only seven yards. No more Virginia. No points. 24-14. Virginia. Going the other way now. Aaron Brooks has his man wide open. It's the tight end to the 27 yard line and that's a red shirt freshman who made his only fifth catch all year long Casey Crawford but he's a big play tight end he's averaging 17.8 yards per catch but six foot six there's our tether fam up above again that provides an excellent pitcher 
Believe it or not, they used to call me the blimp when I played a few years ago, but no. that was long ago. Actually, actually, it was another player on the team, but I was called the blimp when I was a youngster. I can't, I can't believe that. I can't believe anybody had the guts to tell you that. Well, they did it from a distance. <laughs> Third and five. Cavaliers trying to come back. They're trailing 24-14. We're down 24-7 at the half. We have 14 minutes and 15 seconds in the game. Out of the shotgun. Pressure. Brooks got rid of it. Miami wanted an intentional grounding, but officials say there was somebody close enough. The quarterback pressure from, guess who? Number 90, Kenny Holmes. I'll tell you what, these guys, Kenny Holmes and Kennard Lang, know how to pressure a quarterback. And right here, Kenny Holmes doesn't get touched. And it's a smart play right there by Aaron Brooks to feel the pressure and get rid of the ball. But you've got to protect this young quarterback. He's only a sophomore. Give him a chance to be successful. Put somebody on their two best pass rushers, Kennard Lang and Kenny Holmes. Virginia only one for ten on third down conversions. Now they're going to go for the field goal. This will be 44-yard attempt from Garcia. The last one is blocked, and so is this one. Oh, baby. <laughs> Picking it up and running with it after the ball was picked up on the loose scramble was Dwayne Starks, but guess who? <laughs> Tremaine Mack. I'll tell you what, Miami can definitely take just a boring average field goal attempt and turn it into an exciting play. Let's see, was it Mack again? It's hard to tell on that replay. It may not have been Tremaine Mack on that one. Watch number 90. That's Holmes, who got right it. there. He got that big paw out there and just swatted it down. <laughs> what a ball game. 14.09 to go. Miami by 10. DC in career interceptions and two here in this game. First and 10 from the 40 now. Hurricanes up by 10 with 14 minutes to go in the ball game. Just a little bit more than 14. Clement comes out firing. That's a first down and more to the 39-yard line. Magic Benton with the reception. And a gain of 21, and that's the first first down for Miami in this half. You see what Miami did is they came out throwing the ball, first of all, on first down. And second of all, they didn't throw at Rondé Barber. This is the first time in the second half they didn't go his direction, and they had some success with it. Yeah, uh, Rondé told us that he would make his decision. You know, he's only a junior, but he's the same age, of course, as his brother Tiki. And he's thinking about coming out and going to the pro football draft. Said he'd decide after this game's over. Might he have kind of wanted to see how he did against a team like uh, Miami Hurricanes? I think so. I think his decision's been made after the night. Handoff gets about three yards. That's Trent Jones. And let's go to Craig Sager. The Miami offense playing without tight end Yatiel Green. Remember, he scored the first touchdown for Miami. However, he had a sprained jaw in the first half, went into the locker room, it tightened up. He could not open his upper jaw to put his mouth guard back in. They took him back in for x-rays. Now they have been told that he has a concussion as well, so he is in the locker room. We will not see Yatiel Green, who scored that first touchdown back in the game. Well, we're sorry for that. He's a junior. Don't want to make light of an injury, but, you know, just think about that. A sprained jaw for an announcer would be a career ender. To the tight end, Gerald Daphne to the 26-yard line. Another first down pass from Ryan Clement. McKeever made the stop, a gain of 11. And here's an end zone look, and this is an area that Miami has to exploit their tight ends. They've got three of them in double-digit receptions. Here he's going to run just a simple crossing pattern. There's no one around him. Great job by quarterback Ryan Clement of just paying a little pitch and catch, dumping the ball to the tight end, Gerald Daffins. 6'1", 260. And he was hit there by uh, the, the hitter, Anthony Poindexter. Only gave up about 60 pounds on that exchange. First and 10 from the 25-yard line of the Cavaliers. Hurricanes up 10. Here's a handoff to there. Jones, Trent Jones off the left side again for the 23-yard line. Tony Dingle came up to make the play. There's Tony, number 89. Tony is a sophomore. They've got some three good young players up front. Maurice Anderson, who's a redshirt freshman. Um, Johnny Shivers, Tony Dingle, they're all sophomores. So Virginia has a good future for this defensive front. Let's not forget Travis Griffin. He's a six foot three, 239 pound freshman. And he can play a little defensive line. Second down, seven from the 21. They give it to the up back, Nick Williams to the 20. Now, even a field goal here for Miami would be big numbers. You give them a 13-point lead with 12 minutes to go in the game. They're certainly getting in field goal range. But remember, their primary field goal kicker, Andy Crossland, 
who missed four of his last six in the regular season anyway, was shaken up. They were icing his leg down. They might have to go to a walk on named George Gaetan. I like George Gaetan. If he gets a chance to kick a field, we'll talk a little bit about him later. He can kick the ball off. He's got a little power in his legs. He's not very big, but he's a little wide. Third and five from the 20. Penalty markers. Across the middle, complete to the nine-yard line to Mondrell Fulcher, the redshirt freshman. Penalty markers down. It may be against Virginia. Dingle looked as though, number 89, as though he may have jumped offside. Offside and defense. That's the three free plays. It's the third time tonight, and, and every time Miami's capitalized in this situation, once for a touchdown, once for a long pass, a big play, and on this play, and I mean, it's just a smart play by Miami. They don't lit up. They don't slack off. If there's a penalty flag thrown, they just go ahead and execute. There's Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator for the 15th ranked in total defense. Virginia Cavaliers. This is first and goal from the nine. 24 to 14, Miami leading. Clement, Clement. Any play, Jones for the two-yard line. Credit Clement. Smart play by Ryan Clement, making something out of nothing and keeping the wits about him when the heat's getting on. And he's just great at running and moving in the pocket and keeping his feet moving and moving the pocket. Watch him here. He gets all the time to throw the ball. He steps up. There's nothing there, so he wants to make something out of it. He pitches the ball out to his running back, Trent Jones. He takes the ball and gains about seven yards on the play. Second down and goal from the two now. This would make it really deep for the Cavaliers. As Miami leads 24 to 14. Clements on this drive, 4-4, 51 yards, second and goal. Daphne the tight end in motion. Jones, Trent Jones the freshman. And it's 30 to 14 Miami. Nice block by offensive guard Mike Winter on that play. Pulled from the left side of the line to the right. Great trap block. Here you're going to see it. You're going to work to the right of your screen. You're going to see a big mass coming and pull. Right there, that's a big offensive lineman. Boom, right there. It's a great block, but it's a big guy against a little guy. You can't give him a big plus on that play. 280-pounder against a 190-pound defensive back. And they threw a flag on that play, too. Bill Goss, the SEC referee. It may be against the Hurricanes. After this touchdown... Dead ball, personal foul on the offense. Penalty be taken on the kickoff, 15-yard penalty. So it is against the Hurricanes, but the touchdown will count. Miami drove 60 yards in eight plays. Jones carried it two yards for the TD. Trent Jones. But after, splits the uprights. 31 to 14, 10, 14 to go. From the opposite side, Trent Jones on the touchdown run. Hey, I hope you're going to join us here on TBS for dinner and a movie. I'm Annabelle Gerwig. And I'm Paul Gilmartin, and this week we're going to be watching The Outsider, starring a lot of very good-looking men. Oh, yeah, Matt Dillon, Tom Cruise, Patrick Swayze. Uh, Sebastian Cabot is sort of Tom Curtis. <laughs> you know what we're making? We're making Pony Boy Fries yeah. and Sherry Valance Pie. Do for John! Dinner and a movie, 11 Eastern tonight. Delicious television only on TBS. Now we're here to announce a win-win corporate platform. To the old corporate buzzword man. I'm confused. At least Office Max is easy to understand. Over 7,000 Office products, computers, electronics, software. Great stuff, like Panasonic answering machines and IVG books. At guaranteed low prices, so you won't be, you know, budgetly challenged. Yeah. You save time and money at Office Max. Say, isn't that a win-win situation? Oh, yeah. Office Max. We go to the max for you. Huh? Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? You're out. Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue number one, so don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsun Power. The Bronze Flex Integral with its pivoting head gives you our closest, smoothest shave anytime, anywhere. Fast. Huh? Is there a problem, officer? You have a nice day. Braun, designed to perform better. 
You may have seen the, probably have seen the last of the collegiate career of the University of Virginia's all-time leading rusher, Tiki Barber. 3,389 yards in his great career at Virginia tonight. Got a hip pointer early, seven carries, 14 yards. He went out with like six minutes to go in the first quarter and came back here gamely in the second half. But he's hasn't got a been heart able of a line. It. You have to commend him for coming back because he took a heck of a hit, a heck of a whack on his hip, and he didn't have to come back in this game. It was his last game, as you said, at Virginia, and he came back and gave it the old college try, and he wanted to go out there and support his teammates, but, hey, the guy's got a heart of a line. We know he's a tough guy. He's just going back to, to go back in the locker room and take those pads off and sit back and hopefully root his team on to victory to come back against Miami. Great student, 3.36, great point average, and finance in the School of Commerce, a CFA scholar-athlete. They wanted to get him 30 carries tonight. After the penalty, here comes Antoine Harris. And Virginia, once again, is going to have excellent field position. And let's see if Craig Sager, who was trying to catch up to Tiki, got him. Craig? Well, Bob, I talked to Tiki as he went into the locker room, and yes, he does have a hip pointer, and that is painful. However, going back in in that third quarter, the SI joint, the lower part of his back, stiffened up. He talked to the trainers. It did not allow him to run. So he went back in. He is being treated right now, and obviously will not see him the rest of the evening. So that's the end of the collegiate career of Rondé's brother, twin brother, Tiki, who went into the locker room. Not a good way to go out. You may see him at the... The, the show, as they like to say, however. Inside Miami territory again goes Brian Owens. What is that, 11 times they've been inside Miami territory tonight? Virginia has penetrated hurricane territory 11 times. They have two touchdowns to show for it. You've got to take your head off to the Miami defense. I mean, they've done an outstanding job of keeping them out of the end zone, one. And two, their special teams were blocking two field goal attempts. They'll let them get inside the 50-yard line, but they won't let them score. Second down, seven from the 48 of the Hurricanes now. Play fake. You see Aaron Brooks slipping there. But he completes it across the middle to Crowell. Down to the 12-yard line. Make it the 17-yard line. And out of bounds on the near side is Crowell. <laughs> you got to like Aaron Brooks to keep his concentration. Watch right here. He slips, but he stays in the pocket. He looks to a second receiver. You just saw him look off. Right there, he's got Crowell running down the middle of the field on a crossing pattern. Hits him for the first down. He is the future for Virginia at the quarterback spot. Tim Sherman, of course, the senior who did not have a good bowl game here tonight. Brooks only the sophomore. He's come in, gone 8 for 13 for 114 yards. Got 31 yards on that play. This is first down 10 Cavaliers from the 17 of the Hurricanes. Jones, only about a yard or so. Kenny Holmes, we've got him for unofficially 10 tackles. Got a blocked field goal, a sack. And what a game he's had. And when it's your last game, when you're donning the silks the last time for your alma mater, you'll want to play well. And he stepped up to the plate today, and he's had a tremendous game. You see, starter Tim Sherman struggled throughout the night. 3 of 10, 27 yards through the one interception. 8.55 to go in the game. 31 to 14, Miami. Virginia trying to close that gap here. Once again inside the red zone. This has been their Achilles heel in the second half of this season. Complete to Owen. Owen to the nine. Game of uh, about six or seven on the play. The line to make for the first down is the seven-yard lines, however. And on this play, watch Holmes again. He's going to get pressure on quarterback Aaron Brooks. A great swim move right there to go by the offensive lineman, and he puts pressure on the quarterback and drops him to the ground. But Brooks does a great job of hanging in there and throwing the ball. Here it is again. Watch him. He knows he's under pressure. He gets rid of the ball right there for the completion to Brian Owen. Third down, a long two, just inside the 10. The motion out of the backfield goes Jones. Brooks, they double team, they on rushing in, and that's a pass for the first down. Nicely executed, out of bounds at the three, goes Crowell. Woo. And that's a great job of using a little speed protection, breaking the contain, getting out of the pocket right here. Watch him. He's just going to speed to the right. He's going to run to his right. It's a little dash and throw the ball on the run for the completion for the first down to Jermaine Crow. What a night he's having. Six catches, 97 yards, and a TD. And on the season, Crowell only had 33 catches. That's it, 33 pitch, but he's their go-to guy now. Maybe he's got a great connection with Aaron Brooks because that's who he's looked for. That's who he threw his touchdown pass to. Earl's a junior. He'll be back next year, too. First and goal from the three. 
Touchdown, Cavaliers, Thomas Jones. Jones had four free touchdowns during the regular season. He's only 18 years old. 47 is Tony Coley. Shaken up. Uh, let's hope he's all right. He's getting up on his own, I think. Watch the lead by the fullback, 34, Daryl Medley. He's just going to blast through the hole right behind 36 and just clear the way for number six, Thomas Jones. Charles Curry was on the lead, but right here you're looking at Tony Coley. We talked to head coach Butch Davis yesterday, and he said he's an outstanding young man. When you talk about young men, he's a father first. He's a daddy. He's a real smart guy in school. He's even corrected some of the physics books at the University of Miami for mistakes, and he's a heck of a football player, so we hope he's all right. Oh, you know, we're big on statistics and giving you the complete statistical story. How about this one? 3.99 GPA in pre-med. Well, he's almost perfect. Yeah. <laughs> what was he doing, you know? How did he go wrong? Here we're going to see Tony Coley right here. Let's keep an eye on him. He's right in front of Tremaine Mack, running in for the tackle. He gets hit by his own defender. That was the problem. A lot of times you get injured because you don't see the guy that's trying to make the tackle. When you try to make the tackle, you get speared by your own teammate. Garcia with a point after. Everything's an adventure in terms of kicks here because of Miami's great special teams play. Six plays, 51 yards, 2 minutes, 17 seconds. Thomas Jones, 3-yard TD run, and it's back to a 10-point spread. Making it to the pros takes a certain level of excellence. The experience to get the job done right and a reputation for quality. Like AC firing spark plugs from CarQuest. AC spark plugs heat fast and fire hot, improving your car's performance. AC gives you the spark you need all season long. So for the best possible performance, install what the pros install. CarQuest. Welcome to the pros. Excuse me, where's the phone? You know those pants that always fit? Thank you all. Thank you for coming. Your support is crucial. Absolutely crucial. Where's the phone? Congratulations. There you are. Come on. We don't do No, no, no. These are those pants. These are slates. When's the last time you saw one of these? It's funny that people don't think twice about regular visits to their dentist or family doctor but don't see an eye doctor until there's a problem. The fact is, an annual eye exam from a Pearl-affiliated doctor of optometry is important, whether or not you wear glasses or contacts. It can help detect a serious vision problem early when it's most treatable, and I promise it won't hurt a bit. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Beautiful night in South Florida. Miami up by 10 with 7.57 to go. We'd like to thank the Blockbuster Blimp for providing us with these beautiful aerial views. Currently flying over us at an altitude of about 1,000 feet. There's the Blockbuster. And uh, this, with 7.57 to go, one of the oldest cliches. I'm going to say it, though, because it's true. This isn't over. It ain't over till it's over. And Virginia's like Aaron coming Brooks. back. That last drive took very little time. Moved him right down the field in six plays. Took only two minutes, 17 seconds. 31-21. There have been all kinds of turnovers tonight. Blocked kicks. You name it, it's happened. There's Tremaine Mack, who has a fumble return for a touchdown tonight. Blocked field goal. From the three. Lost the ball at the 17. They're saying it was covered by Miami. My, that could have turned things in a hurry. Man who made the tackle down there. Here's the run back, Tremaine Mack. First of all, I'm surprised they kicked it to him. He averages 39.5 yards per return, number one in the nation. And it's a great strip on the play. But Tremaine Mack looks like he recovers it underneath the pile. That's Wale Alegby. That's why I waited for you to say that. Yeah. Wale Alegby. <laughs> 
from Tianek, New Jersey. He is a redshirt freshman, and so Tremaine, <laughs> he keeps making special plays. He gets his camera time. That was on the wrong side of the ledger. Clement, 263 yards, TD, and two interceptions tonight. 31-21, Virginia, 15th ranked defense. They need big plays. Here comes Clement. He slid down, then was hit by Johnny Sh Shivers after he slid down, and the Miami fans wanted a flag. None was coming. Shivers just couldn't resist. He's 6'5", 290, that little shot at the QB. Well, sometimes when you get that 290 going, it's tough to stop when a quarterback slides out from underneath you. What was your peak, peak weight playing time? Playing time, 308. And, like, what? Three, four percent body fat. Incredible. I wish. <laughs> I was a hog, remember? They didn't that for nothing. That's right. You were proud of that. Second and eight. The Canes 19. Clement, hours to throw. Finally completes it out near the 30 to the fullback, Carlo Joseph, and a gain of 11 yards. The NBA returns to TBS on Wednesday, January 8th, as the Pacific Division leading Sonics head to Denver to battle the Nuggets. Winners of five straight. The Sonics hold the NBA's longest winning streak. Gary Payton leading the charge. Chuck Daly and I will be there to bring you the action live from McNichols Arena, McNichols Arena beginning at 8 o'clock. That's the NBA on TBS, January 8th, Wednesday. 6.42 to go on this ballgame. Miami by 10, first and 10 from the 30. Now try to chew up the clock. Chewing up yardage out to the 37-yard line. Trent Jones gets seven this time. And Trent has been the workhorse back here in the second half. Nine carries, 30 yards and a TD. And there's Crossland, the kicker, who punts and kicks. When you talk about the running game for Miami, you would think that Dyro McMillan would be in there a little bit more, but he didn't have success today. But where's Edgar and James? He's the only running back for Miami that's had success. Miami, 234 yards in the first half. They've been held quiet third quarter. Miami couldn't get anything done, but that's great extra effort by Trent Jones to run for the first down. Move the sticks, gain of nine. Keep an eye on Jamie Sharper right here. He'll over pursue this play. Look at him go down the line of scrimmage. He just gets too much depth in the backfield instead of coming down the line of scrimmage. When you're in this situation on the offense, all you want to do is which Butch Davis is doing is move the chains, take time off the clock, and let's get out of here with a victory. So they're going to run the ball. First and 10 from the 46 yard line. Nothing happening on that as they give it to the up back Carlos Joseph. Jamie Sharper came in to make the penetrating play. Clock ticking very rapidly from a Virginia point of view. 517 and counting. I know they're going to run the ball. You know they're going to run the ball. And so does Virginia. That's why you saw the strong safety Anthony Poindexter was one of the first hurt people on the football field to hit the running back. Butch Davis try to turn things around under a program that has been hit by so much adversity. Back-to-back -back eight and three seasons, and for Miami, that's not what they like. No bowl win since 1991. Two years of sanctions. Didn't have a bowl game last year. Scholarship reductions, 12 and 95, 15 and 96. They won't go back to 25 until 1997. Trent Jones made the catch. Shannon Taylor recovering. One of the things that Butch Davis likes to talk about with Miami is that 19 of these 20 seniors who are going to graduate will leave Miami with their degree. Classroom attendance up 42% over the last three years. And his recruiting class came in, this current recruiting class came in with a 2.8 GPA average out of high school and in the high 900s for the SATs, trying to change a perception and an image at the University of Miami. And he's doing a remarkable job at it, and that's a tribute to his success and hard work at the University of Miami. Third and 11 from the 45, incomplete, clock to 358. Add one more note here for Miami since they are making a lot of changes. This will be the fifth consecutive year that the College Football Association has recognized Miami for exceeding the 70% graduation rate 
and that's only one of nine schools. We talk a lot about the well-known academics at Virginia, but there have been some changes they've played. We definitely have, and Butch has done an excellent job doing that. And when you think about Miami, the first thing you notice is the trouble that the players get into. But people don't realize that there are some great athletes, and not only great athletes, great young men at the University of Miami. Look at Andy Crossland limping off the field. He kept it inbounds. They downed it at the 10, a 45-yard punt. for the lowest price of the year during the great Isuzu Fall Clearance event going on now. Oh yeah, mud sold separately. For people who know champagne. You think I'm gonna dunk? I unleash my reverse layup. You think I'm gonna dunk? I unfold my jump hook. You think I'm gonna dunk? I serve up my fall away jumper. You think I'm gonna dunk? You think too much. You see? This is my planet. South Florida was 72 degrees tonight at kickoff here for the 7th Annual Car Quest Bowl. Miami leading Virginia 31 to 21. It has been a game of big plays, particularly if your name is Tremaine Mack. Ah, got that one off the foot of Rafael Garcia. And there was Kenny Holmes with the block. Big plays, 10-point lead for the Hurricanes, 90 yards away to pull to within three for the Cavaliers with three minutes and 44 seconds to go. Aaron Brooks, he's got seven or eight yards down at the 19-yard line. Craig Sager. Well, Bob, the voting for the MVP took place with eight minutes to go in the game. The votes were counted with four minutes to go, and I have the opportunity to tell you that Tremaine Mack was a unanimous choice for the MVP, but then... I get that's not a scoop because Mark May gave him the award about a half hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was somewhere in the middle of the second quarter. And I, deservedly. I so. think he deserves it. He, he's had an outstanding game tonight, and he's done it in every facet out there. He's a tremendous young player in full time. And a little bit of a prevent defense here thrown up by the Hurricanes with only 2.59 to go. Thomas Jones with the carry. 10-point lead here, and the Cavaliers would have to strike fast. They ran the ball that time intelligently, really, because they got the first down to stop the clock. I think it was a smart play by them. First, the quarterback keeps the ball, and he runs, and he gets a big gain, and then just run the ball and get the first down. Move the change. You never know what's going to happen. Maybe you can pop a big play in there, and then hopefully get a touchdown, maybe an onside kick after the touchdown, but they need to throw the ball to be successful in this situation. First and 10 from the 23, out of the shotgun, Aaron Brooks. Missed his receiver, not a good throw. Intended for Demetrius Dotson. That ball was thrown about five yards behind Demetrius Dotson, and, and they're not on the same page. I'm surprised that he's not going back to his guy that he's got a great connection with, Jermaine Kroll. I mean, the, the entire afternoon, the entire evening, actually, he's had a tremendous correlation between the two getting the ball to him his first touchdown pass to him tonight was to Jermaine Kroll and then during the game throughout the game he's had the ability to get the ball to him for first downs and move the chains yeah Kroll has nearly 100 yards six catches for 97 this is second and 10 from the 23 quick drop trouble <laughs> quick feet balls loose looked like Owen fell on it at about the 34 that's a difficult way to get eight yards <laughs> Great hustle by Byron Owen on that play. 
I mean, he's Johnny on the spot. He was following the play. He was going down to get a block for his quarterback, and he ends up getting the fumble recovery. Right here, Miami comes with a blitz from both sides. The quarterback, Aaron Brook, reads it, and what's smart, he takes off in the middle of the field because no one's there. But unfortunately, the defensive speed for Miami catches up to him and caught up to him in a hurry. Brian Owen, we told you about him being a walk-on kicker. And ended up being, worked his way, he was on a scout team, worked his way up to a starting role on this football team. You love to hear about stories like that, about young men who aren't heavily recruited, who aren't offered scholarships out of high school, but then just come in and work very hard and do all the right things and, and earn a scholarship and earn a starting position on a Division I football team. Rick Lance with some words of encouragement if his defense goes back out there. This is first and 10 of 34. They, they don't need to have them going back out there. Virginia wants to have a chance here. Down by 10 with 2.16 to go. Brooks, quick throw, incomplete. A little bit behind Brian Owen, and Earl Little got there very early. Earl Little is number four, the right cornerback, a senior from North Miami, and he was the closest friend and the roommate of Marlon Barnes, the Miami player who was killed, murdered, in the apartment that the two of them shared. And Earl Little has been spending all year trying to overcome his grief and just last week he went back to the neighborhood of the apartment where the two of them live said he stood in the parking lot and just looked up at the window to try to process the grief and get over it, it was his closest friend murdered in the apartment and Brooks just threw that one away almost through the interception and you know, it's tough for anyone to handle tragedy like that but just think of, of a 20 21 year old youngster having to go through college and also deal with some real life with Marlon Barnes there's uh, Earl Little's mom. She's proud of her son. She's got number four on the hat also. Earl Little had a 74-yard touchdown return of a blocked punt versus Temple. Guess who blocked that punt? Jermaine Mack. You win the silver dollar. <laughs> Third and 10 from the 34. Throw it out to the right side of their fullback, Daryl Medley. You can just see that Virginia has just about run out of gas. This is going to be fourth and probably eight. And the Cavaliers are about to go 0 for 8 for their games in the state of Florida. Remember we talked about that earlier. I said maybe we wanted to lick a stamp and mail that in the next time they play in Florida. Well, they haven't had a lot of success here. And it just goes to show you that sometimes it doesn't matter who you play or where you play. There's a jinx against teams. You know, there are those teams that, that you play against that you just can't beat. And this is one of those things for Virginia. They can't come to the state of Florida and win. I'd like to have a look, though, at the national average of teams that play in Florida. Because who are you going to play here? You're going to play Florida State, right. University of Florida, Miami. My guess is not a great national record by anybody. Those are three good reasons not to play in the state of Florida. Fourth and seven. Brooks. Incomplete, and that'll be the swan song for the Virginia Cavaliers tonight with a minute 52 to go in this ball game. Aaron Brooks, a valiant effort. But this Miami Hurricane team that Butch Davis has here, as they're trying to straighten their program around, uh, trying to get off the probation, which will end. They'll go back to the regular recruiting allotment of 25 players. He was, they were down to 12 two years ago, 15 this year. Very pleased with the class he's got coming in here. And Miami may be on their way back. Virginia, you know what you can count on Virginia? You can count on them winning at least seven games again. They've done it 10 years in a row. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank both Miami and Virginia for their cooperation in helping us to prepare for this year's CarQuest Bowl. Special praise goes out to the school's sports information directors, Bob Berta of Miami, Rich Murray at the University of Virginia. Together with the staff members in their departments, they made our jobs here in the booth and the truck a lot easier. We pass along our best wishes all academic and athletic endeavors to each of those schools in this upcoming year. A couple of class institutions here as, as we've talked really about the story of the adversity in Miami coming back from, from bad image and a lot of it brought on themselves with the recruiting and with the problems that the players have had and Butch Davis trying to change things there. And I think when you look at Virginia, their academic reputation really goes noticed forever since the days of Thomas Jefferson. And what's been wonderful is that George Welch has come into this school where they had never had a winning season, never had a bowl appearance until he came there. They'd had winning seasons, never had a bowl appearance. He came in and they go to nine bowls 
in his 15 years. So you can you can recruit at good schools. You definitely can, and he's done an outstanding job recruiting not only in the state of Virginia but out of the state of Virginia. That's why this team's competitive. It's because of that man right there, George Walsh, when he was at Navy. I shouldn't say this, but they upset a great team out of the University of Pittsburgh in 1978 that should have won that football game. That was a team that I played out in Pittsburgh, and, and, and he but, always but, has his players ready to play. But were you injured in that game? Yes, I was, so uh, I can't take the blame. I was injured in that game, but still, I, I mean, they played a heck of a game, and, and we were a good football team. We won the national championship two years before that, and that Hey, baby. He beat a heck of a football team that day. So Miami's going to get nine wins here. That was one of their goals to come into this bowl game. They were disappointed that they didn't go to an Alliance Bowl as they were co-big. Didn't invite them, but invited a team they had beaten, even though the team was glad to come here. You see Aaron Brooks getting some words of encouragement, and you know why that's coming. He's the future. He, he needs to keep his head right. You betcha. He and Thomas Jones, the tailback, and these two young men, they laid it down the line today. The coach is telling them, hey, we didn't win the game, but there's a future and a bright future for you, my young man. Casey Jones, you just saw him there with the the head covering. What, what would you call that? Uh, a do-rag. I thought you might. But offensive linemen, we don't wear do-rags. Why is he wearing that thing? Take it off. I don't know. Maybe he's got long hair, too. Maybe he wants to go to the Raiders. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get phone calls there. Uh, by the way, just like to thank all the people who helped make our telecast possible at Turner Sports. Executive producer of Turner Sports is Mike Pearl. Coordinating director Larry Cam. Carquest Bowl has been produced by Peter Lasser. Associate producer is Joe Vinciest. Technical director is Scott Sickler. Associate director Ted Ballard. Unit manager Pete Scott. Graphics by C.J. Botita. Technical manager Tom Cox, our spotter Kim Anderson, and statistician Malibu Marty Aronoff. And therein lies the story. Too bad we only have a minute 28 seconds to go in this bowl game. Hope you enjoyed our coverage here on TBS. It's been an exciting game. I mean, there's been a little bit of everything happen in this ball game. Tremaine Mack with a wonderful night. Everything promised. You talk about advertising. Tremaine Mack, they said, watch this guy. He will light up the night, and he did. He's the real deal. He is the real authentic goods, and he makes big plays, and he makes big plays happen. And when you watch this young man play, he's exciting. You know, he's the type of guy that you want to buy a ticket just to watch him play because he makes so many big plays, and he's going to have an outstanding future because he is a football player. Not only a great athlete, but what's more important, he's a great football player. Uh, we talked to uh, Butch Davis about whether Tremaine Mack would come out. He's a junior. You know, a lot of underclassmen in the NFL. NFL, NBA a lot uh, come out. They look at the contracts and defensive backs. There's a dearth of defensive backs in the in the NFL. They are looking for defensive backs. However, I thought what Butch Davis said he had told to Tremaine Mack. He says the NFL looks for history and consistency. One year and you've had a great one may not be enough. You might want to think about it. Get a little more money next time around. Mark, you know that that wrote. Well, that I think wrote. I think that's Butch wanting him to come back because he's such a great <laughs> player. But when you look at this guy, I, I said it a hundred times. He makes big plays, and any NFL team will take a guy that makes big plays, and they'll find a way to use him. He's a cover guy, he's a safety, and he's a heck of an athlete. Here's a naked reverse by Clement. You know, he was playing with a separated shoulder against West Virginia, Clement. He also ran down a Virginia Tech back who had intercepted the ball, or I think picked up a fumble recovery. He ran him down, knocked him out of bounds with his separated shoulder. This is, as we said, a tough guy. He is a junior, and he's going to be really pushed by Scott Covington. And speaking of quarterback you, their recruit this year, they've got a commitment from a fellow by the name of Kenny Kelly from Tampa Catholic High School, who is the state of Florida all-time leader in passing. So not only a sophomore Scott Covington seen here who had 295 yards and three TDs in BC, <laughs> but they've got Kenny Kelly with a commitment. So Clement, all these great numbers, and his job's not guaranteed next year. Aaron Brooks. And the, thing that's, to go. and the thing that's funny about that, when we talked to the quarterback yesterday, Ryan Clement, it was one of those situations where the head coach, Bush Davis, said, we're going to try to get some quality minutes for Scott Covington in the football game. And then all of a sudden, Ryan Clement came in and said, no, 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 no. We're going to get some mop-up minutes for Ryan because I am the starter. At best. At best. And, and we didn't get to see Scott at all. And, I, you know, was, there's competitive competition between these fellows. I don't think he's sorry at all. That's incomplete talking about Ryan Clement. He's not sorry. He doesn't want to share one minute of playing time. 
Not at all. And his biggest improvement from last year to this year is his interception ratio. 18 TDs and six interceptions. Last year he was about 50-50, even with TDs and interception. That's where he's made his most improvement. And he said to us the other day that he got confidence when they appointed him the starter in spring ball. He knew it was his job and no one was going to take it from him. See that cut on the left of his eye there? He was very kind of proud of that little mark up there, the linebacker attitude. Almost picked off. Another single digit defensive back. <laughs> That's her a little. Number four, take it. See the, see the cut there? Just there you go. He's got one there and a little one there. And you look at this guy. When he came in the room, I thought he just got done boxing with somebody. I didn't know it was a quarterback, but he's a tough competitor and a very intentional man. Yeah, he's 6'1, 215 from Denver, Colorado. His great grandfather was governor of Wyoming. You know, it's late in the ball game at a 10 point lead. We're talking about politics. <laughs> we slide into our, our political coverage. Hope you've enjoyed our telecast tonight. It has been a wild and woolly game here. I'm not sure what the attendance is. They were expecting about 40 to 45,000 people here at the Pro Players Bowl. Virginia not known for bringing a lot of people. They're a thousand miles away, the campus in Charlottesville. And Miami, despite their now going to be nine and three season, a lot of their fans a little disappointed in the year and in the last couple of years. But I think Butch Davis may get it going here again. I think he's turned the corner. Now he's going to get an opportunity to, to recruit 25 scholar athletes. And I really think he's got this program going in the right direction. And that's what they wanted out of him. That's exactly what they're getting. Well, after two years, Butch Davis record's going to be 17 and six at Miami. And he gets the Gatorade. He didn't like it, but he got it. He'll like the win. The game will end on that play. The seventh annual CarQuest Bowl goes to the University of Miami Hurricanes, 31 to 21. And from Miami, this is their first bowl win since 1991. I hope you've enjoyed this holiday special on TBS. What a performance tonight by number three, Tremaine Mack. The Miami defense really stood tall. Eleven times Virginia was inside Miami territory and could come away with three touchdowns. And let's go to Craig Sager. All right, thank you, Bob. I'm with Tremaine Mack. Tremaine, first of all, we got to talk to you about the great job your whole team did. Studying the game, you're a marked man. What did you see on tape or on film about this team? You thought, again, you can make the big plays. Well, we saw that if you stop Tiki Barber, that was going to be part of the game. I mean, we stopped them in the beginning of the game, put him out of the game for a while, and that gave us some uh, incentive to go out and do what we had to do. I mean, we put him out of the game, the big rusher for them. I mean, we did, came, went out and did what we had to do. I'm grateful for that. Number three, a trio of big plays. Let's talk about them. First of all, the fumble return for the touchdown. Oh, well, I saw the ball come out, and I thought uh, Tony Cole had bounced on, uh, bounced on it, and then he didn't, and it, it squared out inside, and I, I picked it up, and I didn't see anybody but the quarterback, and uh, I knew the quarterback wasn't going to get me. In the end zone again with the interception return. Well, with the interception return, uh, we have been uh, going over that all week long, you know, in the flats, in the flats. And, and what they, we really were biting on it. You know, they really didn't run out and up, which is what they should have done. But we, they didn't do it, and he threw it right to him, and I was stepped in front of it and uh, went I don't know how many yards to the end zone. And your special be the block field goal. Well, I, off the first two uh, extra point field goal, whatever they were, I, I knew that I could get in, and my problem was not dipping my shoulders. So I said, we got to have this one. I got to dip my shoulder, get around him. Dip my shoulder and got around him, and there was no, I mean, he didn't get a hand on me. I dip my shoulder, and, uh, you know, I bought the kick, and it was, it was great that um, Dwayne Starks picked it up and uh, got to offense the ball back. Mark May played in the NFL for 13 outstanding seasons. He and other NFL scouts, other NFL people are very impressed with your ability. The way the rules are now, what else can you prove in Miami, or do you go pro? Well, uh, I don't know what I can, else I can prove it, man, but uh, we'll see after uh, debating it for a couple of days or so, and, uh, you know, we'll know after that. Great job. I know you have to go pick up some hardware. The uh, MVP was a unanimous decision, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's go back to Bob and Mark. As you see, a charming young man, Tremaine Mack, the most valuable player for the seventh annual CarQuest Bowl, the six-foot-tall junior from Tyler, Texas, and an entertaining night he delivered for us here tonight. The CarQuest Bowl on TBS has been brought to you by Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. By Gateway 2000, personalized computers shipped factory direct. Gateway 2000, you've got a friend in the business. And by the 3000 CarQuest auto parts stores from coast to coast. Friend, could you get me the Tylenol?
What happened to your aspirin? Is this prescription yours? That's why I switched to Tylenol. My doctor said aspirin could be a problem. Really? Yeah. He said if you're taking certain prescriptions, you need to be careful. Oh, I've heard that before. With me, Tylenol is the best choice. And it works great. For millions of people on certain prescriptions, Tylenol is the pain reliever doctors recommend most. Talk to your doctor. You know, Mom, the older I get, the smarter you get. <laughs> If you want more computer for your money, you gotta call us, the friendly folks at Gateway 2000. Phone with backup? Pick up the phone and give us a call. Call now. Call now. Call now. I'm kinda nervous. Call now. Grab the phone. Give us a call. Pick up the... Dial, dial, dial. <laughs> dial! Right now. Gateway computers feature the Intel Pentium processor. So call 1-800-GATEWAY and ask for our free video. Call us today. First day, my new boss throws me the keys. Get it fixed, kid. So I took it to Charlie. Guy's a real pro. Let's get the parts. Charlie says to be the best, you got to use the best. All CarQuest parts are guaranteed, and there are more than 3,000 CarQuest stores with every part you can think of. Relax. It's done. Did you get the car fixed, kid? Um, yes, sir. Where'd you get the parts? CarQuest? Welcome to the pros, kid. Once again, the final score from the CarQuest Bowl, Miami 31, Virginia 21. NBA action returns to TNT next Friday at 8 o'clock with a rematch of the 1996 Eastern Conference Finals. The Orlando Magic head to Chicago to battle the Bulls at the United Center. Now stay tuned for a TBS classic, The Outsiders. For Mark May and Craig Sager, this is Bob Neal saying have a very happy, prosperous, and safe new year. And good night from Fort Lauderdale. Sports television into the 21st.